Well, welcome to High School Sports on the Hartford Cable Network. Today we're at Patterson Mill High School. It's the Patterson Mill Huskies taking on the Falston Cougars in a Chesapeake Division baseball game. Beautiful weather, temperatures in the 80s, breeze slight, a uh, little bit of a cloudy overcast. Scott Elliott, Don Morrison with you. It is just a ideal game for baseball. Two great teams, two great pitchers. What else could we want? Don, it's thrilling to be outside at a baseball game. It's beautiful weather, perfect baseball weather. The teams are ready to go. Falston's wearing their visiting orange, and Patterson Mill is wearing teal. Teal, which yeah, yeah. That shocks me. That's unusual. Been a, well, they, um, as you know, my son Max graduated from here in 2018, and I'm used to seeing that solid black or solid white, but they have some pretty flashy looking teal uniforms highlighting that today. So everything's looking up. Interesting, interesting matchup. You've got Falston Cougars coming in at five and two. They won their five first games in a row. They've lost the last two. Conversely, Patterson Mill lost three of their first four. They've won their last two, and they're now five and three. And right. again, you have those great pitchers. This pitching matchup, you know, I talked to someone before the game, and I said, you want to take the over-under? I'm going to give you maybe two runs. You've got one pitcher who has an 0-6-7 ERA, that's Scherzer, pitching for Patterson Mill, and the other pitcher, Chapman, has a 1-6-7 ERA, actually lower than that, I'm sorry. 1.17, 1 it looks 1 like. 1 7, yeah. So, again, if it goes by the way the records show, uh, you're going to have a very low-scoring ball game. Yeah, it could be. I mean, we're at that point of the season where, you know, prior to this, the pitchers have been ahead of the hitters every year. It's been cold. It's hard to hit. We talked about that in a few games we covered. But now you're getting towards the end. You're into May, and this season is uh, the hitters are catching up. So maybe we'll, we'll have some sparks. And, and, you know, these are really good pitchers, no doubt about that. Um, both these teams have to think other ways to win the game, and there's nobody better than that than Coach Matt Roseland is coming up with trick plays, bunt plays, getting men on, moving them over. Patterson Mill historically has been great at that. 14 years, Matt Roseland started this program when the school started back again 14 years ago. He has just been one of the outstanding coaches in the league. Grant Morlock, who is a 2006 graduate of Falston High School, right. coaching now for his eighth year as the head coach at Falston, equally adept. So you've got two great pitchers, you've got two great coaches, you've got perfect weather. This field is immaculate. It is just a beautiful place to be. I really, I am excited about this game. I am too. I, mean, I played for a high school baseball legend in Steve Williams, and it's thrilling to see Matt Rosling come in and do for Hartford County baseball something similar to what Coach Williams did. You know, you, you're talking about teams that have been, he's been a state finalist twice, a state semifinalist once, and having watched a lot of those games, 1A baseball is the toughest bracket in the state. Best pitching, best teams, and Coach rosalind has been very successful at it. Just about ready to get underway the Patterson Mill Huskies again in their teal and white uniforms, the home team. They'll start like this on the mound. Christian Scherzer starting at 3-0. We mentioned an 0.67 ERA. His catcher, senior Caleb Heyman. Around the infield, Aiden Laurentius. He's at third base. Jackson Wheeler plays short. Ethan Scherzer, the younger brother of Christian at second. Evan uh, Selich is at first base. In the outfield, Jonah uh, Bujanic, Michael Segretti in center, and Travis Himmelt in right field. Leading off for Falston, it's Joe Gazinski. Joe, the shortstop, coming in at 421. We're underway, and there's the first pitch just a little bit high. Ball one, plate umpire. Jim Quinnis says, uh, no, nah, that ball was just a bit high. And I've uh, been able to see Christian before, obviously, with my son playing here, and he's he's gotten bigger. He's filled out. He obviously has a little more behind his fastball as opposed to when I saw him pitch as a freshman. So 5'11", 165 is uh, nope, okay. stepping out just as he gets into his lineup. Christian Scherzer, 5'11", 165, headed for Frostburg University next year. Going to play shortstop. A preseason All-State player is Christian Scherzer. Uh, okay, I, I heard he was pitching, but he's going to play shortstop. Shortstop, I'm told. I'm sure he could do both, um, but again, the coaches at the college level will decide where they need him. He's certainly capable. Yeah, 5'11", 165. Sometimes uh, you know they look for that bigger kid. Swung on the missed on the high fastball. Two and two, the count. That's going to be a hard pitch to catch up to tonight, I think. It is. By the way, the outfield fences are 320 down the line, 370 to center field. And I'm not sure that we're going to see any balls clear in the fence today with these pitchers throwing. It's a big, it's a big field, and it doesn't carry really well here. 
there's a lot of balls that look crushed that just don't get out. I've been amazed at some of the home run hitters Patterson Mill has had in the past because it takes a lot to get the ball out of this park. 3-2 count on the first batter. Kaczynski, like any green golf hitter, looking to get on. Line drive at the well hit. Moving on it is Travis Hemelt, and Travis makes the catch. The ball was hit well. Right on the Travis nose. Hemelt. And again, Scott, we talk about the hardest play for an outfielder. The ball hit right at it. Well, line drive right at him, too. And <clears throat> you can see why Joe is uh, one of the top hitters around with uh, being a senior and having a strong average. He did a great job with two strike hitting there. Number two hitter, Jason Fox. That's Fox with two X's. And if that means something to Marylanders, yeah, he is the great uh, nephew of Jimmy Fox, the All-American, uh, I should say, Hall of Fame baseball player. Ground ball to the right side, foul. Pass the first baseman. Yeah, his dad, Del Fox, is the grandson. And then now the, uh, I should say, the, the great the great nephew. Now, start again. Del Fox is the nephew of Jimmy Fox. And son, Jason Fox, is the great nephew of Jimmy Fox. Oh, well, yeah, we're going to trust you. You lost us on that one. But he almost doubled right on cue as soon he as you said right. that. So I do believe you. Jimmy Fox, by the way. Ground ball back to the pitcher, right under the glove, fielded by second baseman Scherzer, throw to first, and the out is recorded on the stretch at first base from Ethan Scherzer to Evan Selich. Get back to Jimmy Fox. He was the model for Jimmy Dugan in League of Their Own uh, that of, I think is one of the greatest uh, movies I've ever seen in terms of a sports movie. Uh, Jimmy Fox, who had had 500 home runs by the time he was 32 years old. Yeah, from Maryland, from Sudlersville, Maryland. On the Eastern Shore? You got it. Jake Bogdan now, the third hitter, two up and two down. Line Base drive, hit. center field, that's going to clear it. Base hit, so there goes your no hitter. Curveball hung up there, and Bogdan just slapped it right in the center. 391 hitter, a 483 on base percentage, eight RBIs, and two doubles. He's on it first with two out. Nice piece of hitting there by Jake Bogdan. Um, there have been Bogdans here a long time. I know we've announced these games that we had a, a hiatus last year, but in years prior there were Bogdans, I'm sure, related. He can't still be the same. So he uh, must be a younger brother. I'm sure. But he, he did a good job. But a lot of hitters today will sit on a pitch, and I don't know if he was sitting on that, but it did hang, yeah. and he just banged it. Yep. So he did a good job of reacting that hit right back where it was pitched. Miguel Agramonte now, the left fielder, batting at a cool 526. That's not a bad average. Down low and outside, nice scoop there by Caleb Heyman. I mean, two out. The nice thing about Jake Bogdan's hit is it comes with two outs. It gets a runner on, and it makes um, the pitcher, Christian Scherzer, throw a little more this inning, and that pitch count will get up there. You mentioned that Scherzer has put on some size. Still 5'11", 165. There's the hook. Nice pitch. Didn't get the call. It was a nice pitch. Call. Yeah. Two balls, no strikes. Miguel Agramonte, senior, left fielder. Two doubles, a triple, three stolen bases, six RBIs, 11 runs scored. Go back to first. I don't have to keep the book today because I, you know why, Don? Why is that? As a center fielder, I'm used to looking at that scoreboard, and the Huskies have that oh. Jones for a lifetime scoreboard. Love it. That has my count, and I, I know you keep everything in your book, but not I. Swung on the missed on that high fastball. Yeah, it, it, you, you miss it if the scoreboard isn't there because, uh, you know, it's just something you can rely on. And here, they do a great job of keeping the score. You don't have to worry they're about right, it. They're right on it. You're right. We don't have to worry about calling the wrong one. Nice pitch. On the outside corner, two balls, two strikes. The count evens up. Two outs, runner on at first base. That's Bogdan. This would be the place to go if he's going to run on a 2-2 count. Knowing the pitcher has to come across. Extends the lead by another step. He doesn't go. Foul back. Mention the high screens around here. Uh, you know, there's an is issue with the neighborhood in terms of foul balls going into neighbors' yards. So about, what, 10 years ago, they put up these huge high screens. There'll be very little coming back our way, so I won't get the chance to make my fabulous diving you'll under the table. You'll still probably react <laughs> to every ball hit back. Under the table, I'll go. Trust me. Curveball back to the pitcher. Shirts are fielded. Runs over toward first base and tosses over there. That's the third out of the inning. One to three. One base hit, no runs. One runner slipped on base, no errors. We played now half an inning. The Cougars nothing and coming to bat now, the Huskies of Patterson Mill. Well, it kind of played out like we thought. 
it was a quick a quick inning, but um, Jake Bogdan did good to break up the no-hitter there. We're into the, the bottom of the first. There you go. This high school game of the week proudly sponsored by APG FCU. It's a member-owned and member-driven credit union helping families in Hartford County achieve, prosper, and grow. While oh, we're giving sort of announcements about the improvements, improvement on the Pattersonville field supported by the Greater Bel Air Community Foundation and by the Matt Golzuski Foundation, as well as fenced by Fenner. Matt Golzuski, war number 10 here, played back in 2011, one of the years they went to the state finals. Matt, unfortunately, last year lost his life to cancer at age 25. So they dedicated the season to Matt Golzuski. His number 10 hangs in the right field sector. Talking to Matt Rosalind, he says as long as he is coach, number 10 will not be given out. So again, honoring the Matt Golzuski family and the foundation that has raised money, the fences you see around the dugouts raised by the Matt Golzuski Foundation. Yep, and Coach Rosalind is right to honor Matt. Matt's achievements to this program are legendary. He was the first great program, great player in this program, and of course helped Coach Rosalind burst onto the scene. And uh, Matt set just about every offensive record in school history and, and you know, maintained them for a while. And he's certainly deserving to be honored. A great kid, his, his family is a terrific family and they are the driving force behind a lot of the fundraising that Patterson Mill has always done as a baseball program, having their annual mulch sale and uh, doing other things to help this become a ballpark. And, and as you look at it, Don, especially from the seat we have, it's a ballpark. It was our first field where we did center field camp. Yes. Back for the Bel Air and Patterson Mill championship game several years ago. Um, and it's got the music, it's got the feel. And this is the way baseball should be. And I can tell you from having played all over the country, Hartford County has been behind the rest of the country when it comes to baseball diamonds and support for baseball. You know, most high school teams play at night. They are on the radio. And until you came about and put us on the TV, Hartford County had a, a big empty hole there. So thanks to you and thanks to Coach Roseland for making it a better experience for every player. And the Hartford Cable Network uh, who have made this possible. We can't ever forget that they're the ones that foot the bill and make this thing work. Yep. So we're now in the bottom of the first inning. Uh, Christian Scherzer, the pitcher, will lead off. He does everything, right? He does. He carries the bats out. To, yeah. Christian Scherzer coming in at 450, four doubles, a triple, three RBIs, three runs scored, been hit by the pitch twice, seven walks, 621 on base percentage. That's what you want your leadoff hitter to do. And he takes that outside because you know what? He threw one out there, it didn't get called, so I'm yep. sure he was making sure that one didn't get called. Zach Chapman, the right hander, as you see, for uh, the Falston Cougars, headed for Loyola University next year. Pop up, foul. John Don, you up? Uh, oh, I thought I had it there. Okay. I was going to make a dive for it. Dive under the table. Let's let the, I don't want to be silly here. <laughs> I, I talked to the fence company to put this up at one time, and this is a very high backstop. They did a great job. Yeah. One and one the count. Jake Bogdan, the catcher. Outside it is on that sweeping curveball. Chapman coming in 2 0, a 117 ERA. Two earned runs allowed in 14 to 12 innings pitch, 14 strikeouts, eight walks, four hits allowed. Batters batting an 095 against. Mr. Chapman. Good foul. Two balls, two strikes. That was a good rip. Good rip. Scherzer, again, you can see uh, why a, a school like Frostburg, who is a very good baseball school, would want him as their shortstop. Excellent hitter. Great all-around athlete. Obviously a pitcher, so he has that great arm. Great. Yeah. In the tradition of old Patterson Mill, Austin Keene, who pitched and played shortstop a few years back. It up high. Good eye, and he's trying to get on any way he can, so he's worked it to a full count, which is his job as a leadoff hitter against a very good pitcher. Something's got to give. You don't have a 450 hitter against a 160 some pitcher and not have somebody win the battle. Joe Gazinski, same thing, uh, did it for Patterson Mill. Really. There's the ball four. Again, Scott, you know, as a coach and a player, the last thing you want to do is to put that leadoff man on board on a free pass. Yep, big ballpark, let him hit it, let your fielders do the work. But that was a little, that was an easy one to take. So we got men on and Patterson Mills got something going right away. Michael Segretti, the number two hitter, coming in at 214. He has a 791 on base percentage because he has nine walks. Very ideal number two hitter. And Coach Rosen likes to use guys that are good hitters in the two spot that are going to take some pitches, work things. Uh, as Coach Rosen kind of barks out the signals, we'll 
I, I would try to get on top right away. This is a pitcher's duel, and this is a big, important inning. Schweitzer in so, close at third base, and it's a good job by Switzer, uh, by Segretti, to step do, out and say, yeah, let me see those signals again. Yeah, or just mess up the timing, right? I mean, let's let's make things happen if you're Patterson Mill. Tony Schweitzer, Joe Gazinski, Jason Fox, and Finley Jordan around that infield. Throw back to first. Good lead there by our leadoff hitter. Hey, you're going to see Patterson Mill do everything they can to disrupt the pitcher and big leads, bunts. We've seen them do this for years now, part of the strategy. Segretti squaring, pulls it back and hits it foul down well, the third base fake line. Bunt, fake bunt swing, and he's pulling it. If the third baseman had been charging, that would have been... In his teeth. Yeah, or <laughs> buy him for a double or more. So uh, things are moving. That Patterson Mill's got no two count, but they've already shown they're going to be aggressive here in the bottom of the first. Miguel Agramani, Colin Lipinski, and Aiden Coster around that outfield. Good pitch. Strike on that outside corner, taking it. Looks like he might have been looking for something else. Strike out recorded. I think he thought it was high, but um, you're very close to take in this situation. You know, yeah, you Christian, know. he got a, a high strike in the last yeah. inning. So you yeah, always tell your hitters if it's close, take a hack at it. You just never know, especially right. early. Right. Jackson Wheeler now, sophomore, 5'11", 140 pound shortstop. Batting in the three hole. There he goes. Pitch down to second base and he is going to be out at second base. What a throw by Bogdan. Great tag by shortstop Joe Gazinski. And he's out two to six. So that was, uh, you know, credit to Faustin. They've they got the number two hitter on a strikeout on a backward K and then they throw out the leadoff hitter trying to steal. So now they're in a situation, Coach Rosen calls time. I'm sure he's going to tell his batters, now let's be careful here. Christian just made the last out of the inning. So, uh, you know, the second out of the inning, he needs yeah. a little time to brush off. He's completely mm -hmm. covered in dirt. Let him get his head together before he goes back out to the mound. So they're going to try to drag this out a little bit. Good call, Scott. Yeah, that pitcher who we don't see it happen often uh, in the Major League Baseball, trying to steal a base. Right. I what mean, Jim Palmer wanted to, but he wasn't quite allowed. They're allowed to, and although they did use Palmer as a pinch runner several times I, early in his career. Yes, he will tell you every time he gets the chance. Nice hook. Hangs a bit high. I tell you, Jake Bogdan, give him credit because a great jump uh, by uh, Scherzer going down to second base. He took a perfect throw and a perfect tag. He slid right into the tag. Yeah, the throw by the catcher caught up to it. Swung on the missed. By the way, Dave Stewart, the second base umpire, the base umpire making that call. One, two. two strikes now. Nobody on. Walk, let off. Thrown out on the attempted steal. Little ground ball at the third base side. Count remains at two strikes. Good job fighting that off. Yeah, you get a pitch you can't handle, you know, just foul it off. Uh, I guess it was it Tony Gwynn who had that great ability to, you know, you threw the ball and he would foul it off and foul it off till he got something he liked. I was just talking about that today. It's it's not seen anymore in baseball. They they uh, don't even try. But you're right. Back in the day, they stay inside the pitch and just get a piece of it. Just a bit outside. One ball, two strikes. 304, five RBIs, four runs scored uh, for Jackson Wheeler. Jackson, the sophomore, 5'11", 140 pounds. Ground ball, second base, moving on it is Ch Jason Fox, scoops it, throws, gets him out of first base. Nice play there by Fox, set up on it nicely. Patterson Mills retired, and we go to the second inning quickly. No runs, uh, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. We did have a walk, but he was thrown out at second base, so facing the minimum number, Zach Chapman. As Scott said, we go now to the second inning, no score. Again, Scott, I said, if you're going to take over under, if you're a betting person, which of course you don't know high school, but if you did, I'll give you two. Two would be about over under. I don't see it being more than a, maybe a, okay, I'll go three, maybe a two one game. Huh? Well, you don't know. It was a, so here's the thing. If they have to go to the bullpens, that's when you'd see this game start to open up. Yep. But you're right. These two pitchers, just by the numbers, are going to keep both teams in it and try to move through the innings quickly. So. You know, what you have to do here is win the inning. Um, Patterson Mill got the first runner on, but Faustin fought back with the defense and got out of it. So it's nil-nil. You know, they, they have to go to the second now and see what happens as this game plays out. It does have a small ball feel. 
Now you, 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 we don't have a pitch count, but we know each pitcher can go 105. That's the max they can go in a game. So they're fresh. This is a new week for them. So they could ha have a complete game. We saw a pitcher earlier in the year, I guess it was the Happy Grace Aberdeen game, where he reached that 105 pitch limit. So it could happen. Mm, you, said, sure. you said it, Scott, that one of the jobs you have as a player, as a hitter, is not only to get a base hit, but extend the inning, make that pitcher work. Sure, it's a strategy. Um, and right now, I, I've coached with a lot of pitching coaches that want to draw things out, waste pitches, you know, your head 0-2, waste a couple pitches. I don't see that being a benefit at all. There's, you know, I, I doubt anyone's going to hit the ball out of the park when you're on the 0-2 pitch, but you've got to conserve pitch count right now in, in this game. Colin Lipinski leading off here in the top of the second inning. Colin is a senior center fielder. Outside corner strike. Scott, you mentioned you see the dirty uniform on the part of Christian Scherzer. He's the young man that tried to steal second base, so he had a little bit of time to get himself composed. Right, get back on the mound. Change his mindset, right? Get back into that pitcher mindset. Oftentimes, and it's why I DH when I was coaching, even the pitcher was a great hitter, I wanted the pitcher to concentrate on his job, and that is, you know, to be a pitcher inside on the curveball. Two balls and a strike. I will admit, I didn't do that for a kid named Ripken. I, I let him hit. Well, that's an easy call. <laughs> it was my exception. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mama didn't raise any really stupid people. Swung on and missed on a nice fastball. Two balls, good, two strikes. Good job evening the count at 2-2. Two -two. He, he had fallen behind nibbling, and he didn't nibble there. He just reared back and threw it letter high. 261 hitter, a double is Lipinski. Yeah. Just off the outside. Yeah. No, he called it, yeah. He's yeah. expanding the zone. I mean, it's he's nibbling. He has very good control, and he was looking for that call, and he got it. I gave him the ball. From my viewpoint, that ball looked a bit outside, but hey, I'm a lot farther away than uh, Jim Quinnis was who made the call. Right. One up, one out. Brings up Finley, Jordan Finley, a sophomore first baseman, 273 hitter. Four RBIs, two runs, two stolen bases. On that outside corner. Coming right at him. And, and I would come at him. You're not, now you're down in the lineup. You, you can't waste pitches on the corners here. On the corner again. Two pitches, two strikes. Hard to estimate we don't have a speed gun. He's not a burner. He's not a guy that's going to throw 95 miles an hour, but fastball has a lot of crispness on it, and it moves. Swung on and missed. Three pitches, two strikeouts. Two up, two down. That brings up Lance Abels. Lance, the DH, DHing for Zach Chapman, the pitcher. Interesting rule, Scott. New one this year. Scherzer, the second baseman, is a second baseman and a DH. I'll explain that in just a minute. Lance Abel's the DH 312 hitter. Oh, over his head, he ducks, it goes right over his noggin. Mm. What that means is that he could come out as a, a defensive replacement could come in and Scherzer could still hit and hit every time. That defensive replacement would be like the person being DH four. It's a new rule this year, a new sort of a, oh, I don't know, a wrinkle, if you will, on the DH. So the second baseman, Scherzer, is the DH or the pitcher? The second baseman, Scherzer, is. In other words, he is playing second base, but a fielder could come in and play second base for him, and he could still bat. Yeah, that's why I was thinking the pitcher might do it, because then if he gets pulled, he could stay in and hit yeah. for whoever comes in his spot. I was talking pitcher. to Grant Morlock and, and also uh, to Matt before the game. Uh, Matt Roseland, and, and they were explaining it to me. It's something new they're trying. Ground ball, shortstop, moving. Yeah, he's set on that. Tough hop. Uh, That's the ball. You can't gotta, sit on it. You got to come in. You're right, Scott. You can't lay back. So it's not turf. The second baseman. Yeah, you're thinking, hey, I'll come and I'll stay back and get the good hop. Nope, you got to come in, especially as the ball comes off that infield grass. Yeah, there's not many fields here you can sit back on. This is a, a pretty good infield, but. Uh, especially with two outs, you can't really extend the inning. Aiden Koster now the batter, the right fielder. Aiden, a 333 hitter. Interesting to see with two outs whether Abels will be off and running. I would. Why not? Got a lefty batter up there hard for the catcher to see. Got to generate something. At least it would answer at Patterson Mills' aggressiveness. Nice close play at the first base. Evan Selich puts the tag 
on the sliding runner. Abel's getting back. Mm -hmm. We saw the great throw in the first inning to get the out for Falston. Down low and inside. Two balls and no strikes. Yeah, the error might have got Christian a little off his game here. Two outs. Matt on first base. Swung on the mist. A little bit of that Ichiro swing there where he was moving his feet toward first base. Mm. Not really fond of that, but it's, uh, I'm just an old baseball purist. I like to. Inside. I think there was one Ichiro and he, he was successful at it, but I've never seen anybody else be quite that successful. Rod Carew was a little, little in yeah. the same vein. He moved around, he had different stances. Yeah, that's true. Moved around in the box, moved around while he was swing, swinging. Brown ball, second base, moving now. Ethan Scherzer taps over his shortstop to Jackson Wheeler, takes the easy way to force out, getting uh, Abel's out at second base, four to six on the fielder's choice, reaching his coster. That's the third out of our inning. No runs, no hits. There was one error, one runner left on base. We've now played an inning and a half. Our score, nothing, nothing. This high school game of the week, proudly sponsored by APG FCU, a member-owned, a member-driven credit union, helping families in Hartford County achieve, prosper, and grow. We talk about these coaches, and you know these are two of the premier coaches, Scott. You, you look at uh, at uh, Matt Roseland, who was played for a school called Wontaw in Long Island, New York. His baseball team won the New York State Championship back in '98. His overall win-loss since he came here, 163 and 76. You mentioned twice been named Maryland Baseball Coach of the Year. Huskies have been state finalists twice, state semifinalists once. Back-to-back -back years in 16 and 17, 16 and 2. And again, I emphasize they're a 1A school playing against 2A, 3A schools. So less kids to choose from, but year after year, I think Matt's had, what, one losing season in all 14. Yeah, he's he's done a phenomenal job. Um, and having, you know, a son that played for him, I really appreciate him and appreciate all he's done for the, the boys, you know, off the field. It's not unusual to see him rounding out you know, the scorer's table during the basketball season and, you know, doing all the other things that, that you do under the category of, you know, other desired skill sets. And he just fits in really well and does a great job at the school. So they're lucky to have him, and he's done a terrific job. Patterson Mill Middle High School. It's, uh, again, opened in 2005. It just seems like it opened yesterday to me. Oh, man. Gosh, what's that, 16 years ago? Mm. Hard to believe. Right. Batting now is Aiden Laurentius. Aiden takes up high, almost dived into that one. Ball one. Yeah, it's a curveball that got away a little bit. Laurentius 368, two doubles, six RBIs, two runs scored. Laurentius a senior, 6'3", 175 pounds. That's it well in the gap. Center. Moving on to the left fielder though, Miguel Agramani makes it without a problem. He was shading a little bit to the gap and was able to run that down easily. Matt, uh, Matt excuse me, uh, uh, you said, Scott, earlier that uh, the ball doesn't carry well here. It looked like that ball was going to go out near the fence. Didn't get very far at all. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you got a 370 marker to center, but having watched a lot of games here, it, it's tough. I've seen balls crushed that don't get out, and uh, it just seems a lot bigger than it is. Evan Selich, the center fielder, moves over a little into right center. Colin Lipinski shades maybe two or three steps. Left fielder well off the line, right fielder playing his normal spot. Infield straight up. I think in the front of the box is Selich. Takes it down low. Two balls, no strikes. In the bottom of the second inning, no score. Surprised to see Falston playing a little deep in the third base position with Patterson being known to lay him down, especially in a 2 0 count. Ball three. Now, if Zach Chapman has had an issue this year, it is he's had eight walks in 12 innings pitch, so ah, okay. he has a propensity maybe to be a bit wild from time to time. Mm -hmm. Three balls, no strikes. I'm taking. How about you, Scott? I would think so. Down the middle. 3 1. I love that pitch count. 
Yeah, the only other thing to do there is maybe if you're going to drag bunt fair or foul, you know, on a, on a strike. But I think, like you said, if he's had a tendency to be a little wild and this game will play out as a pitcher's duel, you're smart to just take the 3-1 count and move on. On the outside corner. Good take, though, by the batter. I mean, you, you know, you've got to expand the zone a little. Um, pitcher got that call, but that's a good pitch to take with a chance of a walk, the Except, one out walk. And Selich was ready to toss the bat and go down the first base, but the, Mr. Clintus said, no, nah, stay right here, young man. Curveball came back a little. Fly ball, right in the middle of the infield, moving on at first baseman, Finley Jordan, and Jordan will make the catch. I would assume that was a fastball, but he, he really slowed the bat down, dragged through it a little, popped it up. Might have been a change up. He Could took have. something off it, yeah. cut it a little. But there's two outs now. Two outs, nobody on. And Ethan Scherzer, the second baseman, the younger brother of pitcher Christian Scherzer. Ethan is a sophomore. He's in 5'11", 165, just like his, uh, his brother. Yeah, they've manufactured another one here. He ball, ball, that's a tough play. Moving on to this Tony Schwitzer. Tony with the long throw to first base, gets the out without a problem at all. Schweitzer comes in and makes the play. So from five to three, three up and three down in the bottom of the second inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. We played two full. Nothing, nothing is our score. Quick, quick innings, moving forward. Yeah. He sawed him off on that one, didn't he? Right on the inside? Yeah, he did, right on the hands. Um, interesting, he was swinging first pitch after, you know, a, a tendency to maybe go a little deeper in counts, but he, he might have been looking just for that pitch and said, if it's there, I'm going to crush it, and just didn't get to it. We talked about Matt Rose, and then let's talk about Grant Morlock, Boston's head coach, uh, we mentioned before, 2006 graduate of Boston, a member of the Wesley College Hall of Fame, just added to the Hall of Fame as a baseball player at Wesley College there in Delaware. Teaches PE at Beller Middle School. He was an assistant for three years, and he's been the head coach for eight years with an 81-53-1 overall record. Boston was a 2A East Region champion and state runners-up in 2017. Also the 2A, 2A East Region champ in 2019. He's won four sectional titles since 2013. It's got to think folks understand and realize that we're, it's a weird season because these kids didn't play last year. The 2020 season wiped out because of COVID. So when you're talking about juniors, you think, well, they had three years experience. No, they're playing wise, playing a sophomore. So I just feel so badly for those seniors who last year didn't get to play at all. Right. It, it's it's hard. I mean, you, you and I were talking about it the first game we did this year. It was good to be back. And I'm sure the players feel the same way. So Faustin will send up now their number nine hitter, Jaden Dillard. Jaden uh, is a substitute starter. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Jaden, an 091 hitter. COVID still uh, affecting uh, about four of the Faustin players. Not that they had COVID, but they had it in the, what they call it, the contact situation where they have to be out. And so, you know, of all things that Grant Morlock had to worry about, playing one of his biggest games of the year and four of his players, including a starter, not, mm -hmm. not available here. Yeah. It's COVID's not going away and, you know, we need to make it go away. Unfortunately, that's I guess he, that's why he's he's playing today. It is no balls, two strikes. And now it's one and two. Well, it's good to have depth. You know, he came in, he made a nice play and he's only a sophomore. So it's a chance for him to step up right next man up. One ball, two strikes, curveball, slam, shortstop up and makes the catch. Good job by Jackson Wheeler. Wheeler got off his feet a bit and made that catch. Good contact. Wheeler didn't give up on it, made the catch. Could play all the way around. Curveball hung a little on a two-strike pitch, and he hammered it, so can't fault uh, anybody there. Well played. Joe Kaczynski now, the leadoff hitter. He lined out to right field in the uh, first inning. It looks played. like he uh, wants to make something happen. Yeah. It looks like he understands that leadoff role. He just looks very determined. 621 on base percentage. Takes a bit high. It's the same pitch they started him out with last time. One ball, no strikes. In the top of the third inning, as you see, no score. Christian Scherzer. Curveball, outside corner. He throws the first high fastball just above the letters, then he throws a curveball. Supposed to look like that same fastball. Get that across. Get me across curveball. So now he's evened it up 1-1. One, one. one out, nobody on. 
foul back up to the right side. That was as predicted. He would come back with a fastball there. Show him the curveball, come back with a fastball. Now you're in a one-two count. So he doesn't want this. He's, you know, Christian knows what's up here. He's coming right after. Does not want to walk the leadoff hitter in a one-out situation. One ball, two strikes, one out. Foul back. Yeah. Very similar to the first at bat. He came up that time when Joe and, and Joe had, I think, either fouled off or swung and missed on that in the last series. So the scouting report might be to attack him high if he has a tendency to swing at it. Maybe he won't catch up to it. Kuczynski also a speedy runner. He's got six stolen bases leading his team in stolen bases on the year. Their ideal leadoff hitter batting 421, but with a 621 on base percentage. But he also has some pop, two doubles, a triple in the home run. It's a nice array of hits. Outside. That was a that was a waste pitch. <laughs> Turned very far outside to see if he would chase and in a one-two count. I guess it's somewhat understandable with a very good batter at the plate. Umpire Jim Quintus uh, walks the ball out and hands it to a little courtesy of the catcher there. Yeah, good, good call allowing uh, Caleb Heyman to get his breath. That ball took a bit, uh, maybe got his left arm, then his right arm. Scott, did you ever catch? Were you ever putting on the tools of ignorance? Oh, and back, the plate? I think back when you were so little, only two people could catch on the team, I did. But that was very limited. Line shot, that's going to be a base hit down the left field line. Jonah, he's going to look two. Turning first, and he's going to hang on there. Good job by Virginia getting over and holding him to a single. Looks like he got that ball a bit on the inside portion. Kaczynski turned on it, got the base hit down the left field line. Well, Joe did a really good job there of, you know, getting back into account that he could do something with the pitch. He got fisted a little bit, but as a good lead off hitter, he could fight it off and still hit a line drive to left field. Now let's see what happens. See if he'll be aggressive and try to run. One out, one on. Keeping him close. Sure. We, we mentioned that he has six stolen bases. And of course, uh, the second hitter in the lineup, as you mentioned before, Scott, that's one of the things you look for in a second place hitter. Work the count, be able to hit behind the runner. Yeah, take a pitch him, if you need to. Sure, give him a chance to seal. I like the way Evan Selich puts the tag down there. On the outside corner, strike one. The little things Patterson historically has done well. You know, the, the holding runners on, changing speeds. Uh, when I say speeds, I mean the tempo of the pitcher to the plates. So At one time it's long, one time it's short to screw up the runners. Jason Fox, the batter, takes it outside. Ball and a strike. Fox grounded out to second base, first time up, 318 hitter. This is the inning, you know, for Falston right here. This is, you're approaching the middle innings. And you got your leadoff man on. It's time to make something happen. Make a move. The team dives back. Good, Good job. job. Good job by Christian. And, and he's a base runner. You know, Christian Schertzer is a base runner, so he knows that as a leadoff hitter, Joe Gazinski wants to run here. And a good job by Gazinski to make him be aware. Took an extra little half step on this one. Stay in there, swung on the miss. Nice curveball. You know, that was the pitch to go on with the curveball, but now you're in a one-two count. I would I would think you're gonna see some high heat here. Yeah. It's gonna be a little tougher to run, but yeah, if I'm a pitcher, I might throw out maybe even a pitch out or at least something off the plate. I'm not sure they'll catcher. waste another one here. Yeah, there's Foul. a high fastball. I, I don't think you know, with you don't want to drag that pitch count up and you need to go you need to get that second out right here. Yep. Because if you can split the lineup in half, leave Falston with no runs out of this inning and leave the leadoff man stranded, you're you're on your way into the middle half of the game. Remember, Diller hit that ball hard the first batter up, so we've had two hard hits here against uh, uh, Scherzer early on. Back safely again at first base. You can see the pattern here. Christian Scherzer is just making sure that he does everything he can to hold the runner tight. That'll also help him if it's a double in the gap. You know, maybe the Joe Gazinski won't score. So he's playing this really well, keeping an eye on him. Not going. Ball was Stood high, and that may have been yeah. the pitch that thinking he may have been running. <clears throat> As you said, Scott, he did waste it, though. Now he's two and two. Can't go three and two, so look for this pitch to be the one that makes something happen. Yeah, I think the hitters, the, the hitters are ready. He's not blowing them away, so I think the fielders have to be ready. This ball's coming out. 
There he goes. Swung on the miss. Throw down to second base. He's going to be safe at second on the steal, but the strikeout is recorded, so now we have two down, but a runner in scoring position, Kaczynski, with his seventh, seventh stolen base of the year. That was well played. Um, you know, you... Caleb Hayman came up a little open, made that throw out of a little off-balance position, and the ball tailed high, so it wasn't close. But now Falson has a two-out rally with a man on second. And Bogdan had the base hit back in the first He inning. hit it well. He's going to be jumping on the first strike. There it is. Inside fastball, swung on the miss. Tied him up a little with that high yeah. first strike, and I think Jake was sitting and just pulled the trigger on something he probably shouldn't have. But... I have no problem with the guy being aggressive here, with especially with the hold. Patterson Mills doing a little bit of a hard hold with both infielders pinched up the middle. And there's the throw throw back attempt. Is, and it hits Ooh. the runner and comes back. Luckily for Patterson Mill, comes right back to Ethan Scherzer. Looks yeah. like it hit the runner. It did. He was out in wiffle ball, no doubt about it. But <laughs> that, that hurts right on the calf, probably. Gusinski says, uh, I... Uh, don't rub it. You know, that's what they say, right? Oh, no, you rub it here. What you do, if you're, if you're Kaczynski, is you rub it, you draw this out, you go down and stretch, and then you steal on the very <laughs> There you stretch. go. Look, you limp around and say, oh, I can barely walk, and then take off. I got it. Yeah, or with two outs, that might not be the best idea, but I was a base stealer. I'm yeah, never... But that comes from Steve Williams, because he was tricky and, you know... Yeah. Uh, devious, I th I'm going to use devious rather than tricky as he, an opponent. He had a great strategy with, <laughs> with me on second base and two outs. He said, you are welcome to steal, but don't be out. Don't be out. Yep, yep. And better yet, if you can slide hard and take the third baseman out and the ball goes down the line and you score, that's a better play. There you go. But if you're out, then you're in trouble. Two out now, runner at second base. A very hard hold. So the middle, you know, for, for Jake Bogdan being a such hitter, they are leaving some holes open here. There's the curveball. Wow. Curve. Nice pitch. That was. After that high fastball, the first one, and he throws that curveball. Yeah, they got first base open here, so do you think they'll nibble? I don't or know. You don't want to give Jake Bogdan a chance to get a hit. Agramani coming up next is 526 hitter. I'm not sure if that's a, a good move of high on the fastball. One and two. Yeah, you're uh, facing number three, four, and five here in the lineup. This but you only need one out. So the, ch the, the question is, who do you want to face? And yeah. you do have two strikes on Bogdan. The hardest pitch to hit is a two-strike pitch. But uh, I don't know. There's, you definitely want to get your fielders set. Nice block. Great block by Heyman. Heyman really threw that right shoulder into the pitch and got his body in front of it. Very well schooled on that. Unlike the game we did at Haberty Grace earlier, uh, where the backstop was way away from the field, this backstop is very close. It is, but it tails a little toward the line. So something that gets off the shoulder there could roll towards the dugout and be a really good opportunity. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Oh, close. Oh, Scherzer wanted it. Didn't get it. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Runner at second base, no score. We're in the top of the third inning. Well, I, you know, you got to be careful here. Three, two, first base open. You're not sure how the ump saw that last pitch. I would throw it again. Curveball outside, ball four. And they went for the try to make him swing in the dirt strategy, and Bogdan did a good job laying off it. Let's see if that strategy works now with uh, Agrimani coming up. Agrimani, who grounded back to the pitcher in the first inning, final out of the first inning, comes in at 526 with a 667 on base percentage. 11 runs scored, six RBIs, a double, a triple. He didn't put a great swing on the ball last time, so you know, while Bogdan did. Um, they got a soft hold on Bogdan, so he has a big lead. So a double in the gap could probably score two. But I think Christian Church is going to try to get right on top. Swung on the list, and you're right. You're right, that inside fastball. It's challenging. He's, he wants to get him in the hole and then use his advantage, his pitcher's count. No balls, one strike, two outs. Top of the third inning, no score. And Patterson Mills got to be careful that their fielder's in the right position for the ball coming out. They don't want to let another error happen with two outs. That's that pitch he keeps wanting. He's just a little high and out with it. We've seen it uh, called, yes, and we've seen it not called, that pitch right on the outside corner. Yeah, Christian's a pro, though. He's not really reacting to it. He's just putting it there, showing the up. This is where I want to be in this count. Maybe you can change your mind. One ball, one strike. That's a wild pitch. Yeah, that's... Runners will move up to second and third. Couple in the dirt that the catcher's blocking. He didn't get the block that one. That's, that's not what I would have wanted to do. You're in a, a hitter's count now, and you've moved two runners in scoring position. 
one, a batter that, you know, maybe you didn't have to waste one in the dirt there. And you take away the force play, now you've got to get the out at first base. Yeah, everybody's throwing over. So now you're gonna have to throw a fastball. Two balls, one strike, two outs, runners at second and third. Pop up foul and out of play. Count evens, two balls and two strikes. This is interesting because I, you know, as a hitter, you've seen the fastball a couple times. So, you know, Miguel, I mean, he's. But would you risk the curveball and another wild Right, ball? exactly. You, you've kind of taken that out of the arsenal by just throwing it to the backstop. So we'll see. You know, some pitchers doesn't bother. They'll throw the curveball again. Big pitch. And of course, you have to have faith in your catcher in that case. Here it is. Up high. Three balls and two strikes. So he shook something off, probably the curve, right? And he went, he wanted to go fastball. All right now you got three two and you got your cleanup hitter. Do you first base curve ball here. Yeah, you're right. First I'm, is I'm not giving him anything to hit with okay. first open. Okay. It's too tight of a game. Not, not a bad pitch. He's, he wants it. Now he reacted a little. He wants that call. The ump's been consistent this inning with it. But you know what? If if as a pitcher, you, this is one of the things you'd see Austin Keene do when he pitched for Patterson Mill. Your, your game strategy is to throw that pitch, and you want that call, so you keep throwing it. And you're hoping that as the game goes on, the ump starts to convert and starts to think. He converts to your side. He's like, this kid's pitching a great game. He's not he's not hitting that spot by accident. Yeah. I think it's a strike now. You know, and, and you slowly start to move the umpire, expand the zone a little. Um, and I think all they're doing here is, is talking a little bit because the inning's dragging on. Matt Roseland, the, uh, the coach of uh, Patterson Mill, going out to talk to his entire infield. Two Bases walks. Bases are loaded. Yep. Yep, two walks back to back. Matt Roseland, almost, there's almost an automatic ejection seat on the, the coaching uh, bench right, right there to send him out. Or yes, no, he sent pitching coach out. But that's, that's the pitching coach's job, to come out and talk a little bit. Let's see exactly what... Um, what we want to throw, what's the scouting report, let's go over things. He's just giving him a breather. Brandon Bierhaus, Patrick Sears, and Bill Benson, the assistant coaches for Patterson Hill. Coach Bierhaus has been here a while, so he, I'm sure he just said, let's relax and get this guy. Well, here we are, bases loaded, two out. Blow your neck, out. right? Blow your out. neck, force out anywhere. Outside, ball one. <laughs> Colin Lipinski, a senior. Not stranger to these situations. He's got an opportunity to do damage here. Base hit scores two. Patterson Mill playing deep all around the diamond. There's that outside corner strike. One and one. We mentioned about uh, uh, Chapman. Also, uh, Scherzer's had nine walks. He's only given up uh, 10 hits, but nine walks. So 37 Ks, 10 walks, and 21 innings of pitching coming in. Uh, if Beerhouse told him, look, just throw the pitch lower. Stop trying to get the high outside pitch, the low outside pitch. And see, he's been low twice. That, that's the one you want, because that's hard to hit. Two balls and a strike. The right no side. Place, uh, no right place to put him, Scott. No. This has Just to be a strike. Keep challenging him again. If I'm Lipinski, I'm ready to hit on this one. You know he wants to throw it across the plate. Swung on in this, blew it by him. Two and two. Wow. How exciting is this? You know it's going to be a low-scoring game, or you think it is. So this is important for the infielders to know what the pitch is. And if it's going to be another outside fastball, you need to shade the other way with two strikes on the hitter. It's going to try to go the other way. You need to take away the hole, especially the 4-3 hole. Outside. Yeah. See, he wants that. He's trying to get that call. And now it's 3-2. That gives the runners the right now to move. They'll be moving on the pitch. Two outs. Three to the count. We always watch out for Patterson Mill in this situation. They are so good at pickoff plays. We watch Evan Selich maybe cut in at first. We watch some kind of deception. Good time out there. Time out called by Lipinski. Three right. balls, two strikes, bases loaded, no score. But something's got to give here. Grant Morlock comes in from the third base coaching box and says, come on, let's make it happen. Here's the pitch. There they go. Swing on and miss. Strike three and down he goes. Uh, his focus on the glove there was outstanding. He did not pinch the corner. You know, he made sure that pitch was another few inches in and down to get it where he wanted. And I'm not sure he needs to be perfect. You know, they're not catching up to him, especially after the first few hitters, especially on that outside part of the plate. He could live out there, and if they do hit it, you know, tell your second baseman, your first baseman, ball's coming out your way. They're not going to crush it into the right center gap, at least not from what we've seen. Well, it's a six-batter inning, uh, two walks, a, a base hit. 
he ends up getting the big strikeout on the 3-2 pitch and put a star behind the, beside that inning as the Falston Cougars come up empty in the top of the third inning. This high school game of the week proudly sponsored by APG FCU, a member owned and member driven credit union helping families in Hartford County achieve, prosper, and grow. We are at Patterson Mill, home of the Huskies. Uh, Patterson Mill coming in at uh, five and, and three. They again lost three of their first four games. They've won their last two in a row. Monday they defeated Tech, Harper Tech by four to nothing. On the other hand, Boston, who won their first five games in a row, has now lost two in a row. But Boston defeated North Harford, gave North Harford its only loss of the year. Well, it's good to see the fans back out too and in this crowd and Patterson Mill fans and the Falston fans that are here doing a great job. They're wearing their masks and that's important, especially since crowds outside can still be a risk and you're on school grounds and I think everybody's happy just to be out seeing some baseball. Let me correct that. It was, uh, it was Patterson Mill that gave North Hartford their only loss. Uh, Falston lost Monday to North Hartford by 6-1. to one. They also lost to Seamolton Wright 11-7. So their last two games they have fallen. Like to get back on the winning beam if they could. So Patterson Mill coming up now in the bottom of the third inning. They'll send up the bottom of their order. Caleb Heyman, the first batter, the catcher coming up, followed by Travis Hemet, Hemelt, I'm sorry, Travis, and Jonah Vujanic, the third. Yeah, another Vujanic uh, here. They... Yeah, they're three brothers now. I'm going to learn to say their name eventually. Alex was in 2016, and Nate, 2019, most valuable player on the team. So Jonah sort of continues, continues this pattern. Yeah, and I think Nate was the one that didn't get his senior year because of the That's right. COVID response. Last oh, I was stuck nice in Don, I was out of the way. See, you still have those reflexes. Me, I just sort of watched it. I have no idea. One ball, one strike. You know, Caleb's right on that pitch. He was. I mean, that, that, he really was when you see that coming right back to the screen. Caleb, a 278 hitter, two doubles, two RBIs on the year. 6'2", 195 pound catcher. He's a big guy, but he, and he chokes up. Isn't it interesting? You don't see that much anymore in the big leagues where they're all paid to hit a home run or strike out. You know, we've actually got a, a young player who's choking up and looking to make contact. Now back out of the way. Right back. He's, he's right on it. He is. Two balls and two strikes. We are in the bottom of the third inning. No score, as you see. Kind of as predicted, but a little unpredicted is the fact that both teams have had, you know, their, their chances, especially Faust in this last uh, half inning. They're really shading Caleb into the six hole right now with two strikes on him. So that could be, you know, an indication of a, a curveball inside or pitch inside trying to get, not let him extend his arms. Joe Gazinski, the shortstop, shading over towards third base. Well, oh, nice changeup. Yeah. That may be the first real changeup we've seen. Yeah, that could also be why the shortstop took a couple, couple steps into the <laughs> hole. So, um, of course, as the coaches used to tell me, or it could just be he's out of position, so you better hit the pitch. <laughs> That'll bring up now Travis Hamilt. Yeah, his walk-up music was the same as yours, Don. Really? Welcome to the Jungle by Guns N' Roses. I have no idea what that is. My walk-up was uh, 9 to 5 by Dolly Parton. Don, we're live on the air. <laughs> I was more happy with the five part than the nine part. It was always good leaving work better than coming to work. You did a great job. I, somebody <laughs> was just telling me they remembered you from your days. Fondly, because yes. I was the one that called up in the morning and said, you don't have to come to school when it was snowing. You were the spokesperson. I was. Called them off work. Okay. Was, yeah. they, they always were happy to hear from you. They were. Yeah. And if I didn't call, then they called me and, and cursed me out. Why didn't you call this morning? Oh, what a curveball. Hangs a bit high. So if he ducks his head into that while it's in the strike zone, it is a strike. It is that. If it hits. Or if it just hits the strike zone. I had a call the other night in a softball game. Scott, I'll ask you about here in a moment. Up high, two balls and a strike. The batter bunted the ball and dropped her bat in fair territory right where the bunt was rolling. Mm -hmm. Didn't hit the ball. Oh, didn't hit the ball? No, the catcher had to come out, go around the bat, and mm -hmm. throw the first base runner was safe. Mm -hmm. So wondering if it was interference. Or not. Yeah, see, I'm calling, I say, the idea is you're supposed to drop the bat out of play. 
right. drop to bat in play, specifically where the catcher had to come and alter her route to get to the ball. This is why umpires are humans and not drones, because there has to be some judgment. If, the, if they think that it really tried to interfere with the play, then they could definitely... Well, see, that was my point. So you look into her head and you say, oh, she didn't do it on purpose, it was an accident. No, if you drop the bat in play, sorry. Uh, I talked to the umpires and they said, no, that's fine. That's not a rule, unless it hits the ball. Fly ball, right field. That's trouble. Moving, moving, moving. Coster, Coster diving and making the catch. Does he hold on? Yes, he does. The out is recorded. Good job by Dave Stewart right there on the play. Aiden Coster coming over, stayed with it. Sort of halfway dove, halfway fell as he caught the ball, and the out is recorded. That's a good play because if he doesn't come up with that, it could be man on second, one out. You come up with it, two outs and you got your leadoff hitter up, putting Christian Schertz in a position where, you know, he'd, he'd rather be one out with a man in RBI situation than trying to lead off the inning with two outs. So it's a well, well played. Jonah Vujanic, the batter, takes a strike. 118 oh, hitter on Jonah, the inning. Yeah, I thought we were already at the top of the order. He snuck in on the other end. Yeah, we can't, we can't forget He's, there are Vujanics in the Pattersonville lineup every year. Remember that Chapman has uh, faced a mental one so far. He walked the batter in the first inning. But uh, that was Scherzer, and Scherzer thrown out trying to steal. So he's still working on nine up and nine down if he can get them. No balls, two strikes. Fastball, just off the corner. Ball and two strikes. He's trying to get that corner too. That was your, your good waste pitch where it's close enough that uh, you, know, you give the batter something to think about. Zach Chapman, the senior pitching. Ground ball, foul at third base. Just hit foul. well. And low and inside pitch, and Vujanic uh, did a nice job of turning on it. And he just dropped the bat head and let the bat head do the work, and just foul. Well, you love that as your coach, uh, having brothers or you know, sisters coming through. And I think Alex Vujanic helped them organize their mulch sale for their big fundraiser, so he's still involved. Yeah. And he was a leader when he was here, so that's good to see. Line drive in the right it's center soft. field. Moving on it is Coster, and Coster will make the catch. Yeah, they only needed one fielder. I don't know why they sent the other guys out there, <laughs> but they do retire the side. Eddie Fainer, the famous softball pitcher who would have his fielders sit down, and he would strike everybody out. It's sort of like you. Why, why go out? Eddie Fainer would go out to second base and throw. He was so good. Yeah. Still nobody could hit him. Yeah, I, I played fast pitch softball a brief time when I started at Signet Bank, and they had the, the Maryland, the Bankers Insurance League, which was the oldest fast pitch league in the country. Wow. And the first year I said, no, 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 I'm not doing that. And of course they stayed on me. And the year or two I played was the most, it's the most electrifying game because it is a one nothing game. I mean, the, the, you talk about pitching duels, you got to get a guy on and chances are the, he still won't score because yeah. the, the ball's restricted. So it doesn't go as far as a normal softball and the pitchers are right down your throat, yep. just pumping. And then they throw that change up. It's like, okay, you're now finally geared up for the fastball. Yeah. Here comes the change up. Oh, you yeah. have taken two steps. And half, you've swung twice. They call three strikes on one pitch. It's just not fair. Nothing but respect for fast pitch softball. And it's a fun game. It's exciting because it's but low you scoring. You don't see it anymore because it takes so long for a pitcher to develop. And now folks want to play slow pitch softball because they do. It's a beer out. league thing. But yeah, you go out and play. You don't have yeah. to, you know, practice. Yeah, those so. big companies are gone too. My father played. My father's in the Hall of Fame for the Maryland uh, Bankers Insurance League. Wow. Uh, fast pitch Hall of Fame. And he, I remember when he played, there was, you know, USF and G Insurance, uh, Provident Bank, all these large companies that could put teams on the field. Maryland had a big league, but those companies are all gone and those leagues are gone. And the pitchers would get paid handsomely and they would hold out and, you know, you wanted, because that's what made your team. You had good pitching. You, that's it. And so they would get, you know, they get like thousands of dollars because companies brought in good money. Was, spectators came out and watched the games. It was exciting. I it tell was. you, I've, I've hit a couple of those balls on the nose and they don't go anywhere. Yeah. The pitchers could literally knock the bat out of your hands and they knew how to do it. So now we go to the bottom of the fourth inning, excuse me, to the top of the fourth inning as Falston will send up their number seven, eight, and nine hitters. Finley Jordan coming up. Finley fanned back in the uh, second inning. Half swing. Umpire says you swung. 
strike one. Finley, a 273 hitter. Finley, just a sophomore, a big kid for a sophomore. Yeah, a good batting average for a sophomore. He sprays the ball around. It's one on the miss, 0 2. Christian Scherzer now, after having a difficult inning there in the uh, top of the third inning, would like to get in and out real quickly if he could. Up high. One ball, two strikes. Again, he does have a full complement of his pitches. He can go 105 pitches, which is the limit. Don't know what his pitch count is, but uh, he's out there. the prototypical Patterson Mill player for Coach Matt Rose. He really is. He's he's calm. He's collected. Uses deep breaths well. Relaxed. He's been in you know control. Even though I bet you he would say he doesn't have his best stuff today. But you know that's that's coaching and just good composure as a player. North Hartford leading the league. They've got just one loss. That was to Patterson Mill. It was. And probably to Christian Schertz. Uh, probably. Foul back. I think we did get that. Yeah, we reported did. Reported to us. Let me see if I can see uh, my notes here to see. By the way, I will give you this little bit of information. During this winning streak, uh, 21 straight innings without giving up a run, Patterson Mill. Foul ball, third base moving. Laurentius to throw to first base. Nice stretch over there by Selich. He has no problem stretching. He looks like Gumby. That was a harder play than he made it look. People now will say, who? Gumby? <laughs> I did that for your benefit. <laughs> Gumby, if you don't know, was a little green guy, a cartoon character who could stretch. Right. Lance Abel's now to the plate. He did not play baseball, though. Lance with a shot towards second base, moving on to the Scherzer. Scherzer bobbles and now has no play at first base. This is, this is what we were talking about before. You know, Christian, if he doesn't have his best stuff, he might not strike everybody out. Ball's coming out. Fielders have to be ready and make the plays. And that's more fun if you're a fielder, right? So, but you got to do it. You can't keep giving Falston extra base runners per inning and riding up the pitch count. Abels has been up twice. He's reached base twice on errors twice. Got stranded back in the uh, second inning. That'll bring up Aiden Coster. Fly ball in the center field. Moving back on it is Segretti. Segretti will make the catch. Okay, one pitch, one out. You know, now you got two out in the inning. And you bring up so your ninth hitter. Right, that's, yeah, that's one way to counter the error, right? Caden Dillard, the sophomore. Hit that line drive to the shortstop back in the uh, third inning. First out of that big third inning that Paulston put the bases loaded. So we know he can make contact. Just a sophomore. Again, Scherzer, who is a shortstop by trade, he's a pitcher because he has a great arm. So you know that he's the kind of athlete who doesn't mind throwing over to first base. Strike on the outside corner. Scott, with two out and your ninth hitter up, would you risk trying to steal a base and having your ninth hitter lead up again? I don't know. I mean, it depends on if you can, as Coach Williams would say, just be safe to do it. It's not <laughs> easy. I would think about drag bunting. I think you've got to look to make things happen here to get back to the top of your lineup. Go back to first base. Yeah. Nice tag. Good job by Heyman. Yeah, he's serve. got a strong arm. His, his footwork was a little off on that, but it was a good throw right on the money. And, you know, the Patterson Mill's going to throw behind you. They're going to do what it takes to get out of an inning. If they can steal an out there. Um, you know, Aiden, Aiden Lorenkis is playing a little deep, so we were getting back to what do you do if you're false to maybe you try a drive by. There's that low pitch on the outside corner. As you said, Scott, they seem, to keep they seem to be getting that low outside strike, not the high outside strike. Yeah. One ball, two strikes. Two outs, runner on at first base. Yeah, with two strikes, I'd come in a little. And Mike Hems out there. And Ground ball, second there base. Is. Moving is Scherzer. Scherzer picks it up and throws him out at first base. Okay, so you make an error, and of course, where's the last out of the inning coming? comes right back at you, right? Because that's baseball, and he made a good play on that to get out of the inning. We talked to Matt Roseland, and, and Matt was saying, that, I mean, no secret, one doesn't want to broadcast, but Scherzer does have, we're talking about Ethan Scherzer, has an issue with his arm. And you can you saw that throw to first base was a little bit of a flip throw. That's why he is the DH as well as the as the second oh, baseman. Okay. So he may or may not be DH'd or have a DH go in for him, I should say, a designated player go in for him. This high school game of the week proudly sponsored by APG FCU. 
a member-owned and member-driven credit union helping families in Hartford County achieve, prosper, and grow. No serious injury to Ethan Scherzer, just a little bit of an issue with the arm. and uh, So you can protect him, and that is if you get into a tight situation and you need to have somebody who, you know, can uh, make the better throw. Right. Might put a, uh, somebody else in. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, you know, I figured that I actually called the wrong right fielder, but I was thinking in this situation, he's going to try to, he's throwing hard. Falston, when they do make contact, the ball's going to the right side of the infield. So, you know, the second baseman makes the play, you get out of the inning. You come back in and talk about that and say, look, we, we just got to keep pounding the outside part of the plate. We're going to get outs. We're going to get opportunities to four outs. We just don't want a little blooper to get in. So let's come in with two strikes, take away the blue pits, challenge them. And I think Patterson Mill kind of has their defensive game plan set. Now, offensively, um, they need to make something happen. And this is the inning to do it if you're Patterson Mill. You got the top of your lineup and you're you're in the fourth. Yep. So the scoreboard only lets them play seven here at Patterson Mill. And I think they do that everywhere, but oh, uh, okay. it might be just here at Patterson Mill. You may be right. Just kidding. Christian Scherzer, the leadoff uh, hitter as well as the pitcher, he did get on. He's the only Patterson Mill runner batter to get on. He walked, thrown out at second base on an attempted steal, leading off here in the bottom of the fourth inning with no score. So this is, again, who's going to give here? you got a 450 batting average against a 167 batting average or whatever from the pitcher. Starting out thinking he's sitting on a fastball. They're starting out with a ball. Yeah, it's an 0.95 batting average for Chapman. 0.95. Yeah, a 1.17 I can ERA. see why. I can see why. But if you're Christian Scherzer, this is the pitch. This is probably going to be a fastball. He doesn't want to walk you again. Fastball popped up. A little outside. He had to reach for it. Anxious to get the hit, though, as you saw. He was ripping. Christian Scherzer, 5'11", 165, 450 hitter, four doubles, a triple. Two hit by pitch, seven walks. Again, he is your consummate leadoff hitter. And I do think the ball seems to carry well to right field here. So if you can get behind a fastball here and drive it. Five ball deep into the left center field, moving back on it. Center fielder calling. Should Communication. Should be the ball, but the left fielder takes it. Miguel Agramonte. You know, your, your coaches would tell you the center fielders should have, have anything that there's a doubt, but Agramani stayed with it and got the out. Yeah, a little communication breakdown out there, but they get the out, so it looks the same in the scorebook, right? Yep. Agramani did a nice job on catching it high. If you're going to be running together, the idea is to try to catch the ball high, and he did it. One out. Michael Segretti now, who fanned looking back in the uh, first inning during the time that Scherzer was thrown out at second base on the steal attempt. Another thing you demand of these hitters in the two spot is now they become leadoff hitters with one out, right? So good take there. He's got to get on. He's got the middle of the lineup coming up behind him. And, and this, is, this is a game of blink here. See which team's going to give in. Down low, two balls, no strikes. Now here's a man, Segretti, who has a 214 batting average, but he's got a 791 on base percentage. The way you do that, he's got nine walks. Good eye. Yep. Scored 10 runs. Ground ball. That's tough play. To third and foul. Tony Schweitzer goes over and makes the uh, pickup. Schweitzer in his first year. Schweitzer, just a junior. Captains Gazinski, Zach Chapman, and Colin Lipinski. Right up the middle, the pitcher, the shortstop, and the center fielder. Austin coming in with a five and two record, having won their first five games. Lost their last two, two in a row. Two balls, one strike, one out, nobody on. Fine shot, center field, I right at him. the center fielder. Good job there by Colin Lipinski. Again, Scott, you know that the toughest play for an outfielder, the ball hit right to him. He nailed it, he crushed it, but that's the advantage of no shift here. They were all right there waiting for it. Two out, nobody on, bringing up number three hitter, Jackson Wheeler. Wheeler's sophomore, grounded out to the second baseman in the first inning. 304 batting average. It's the right fielder's turn. We've had the left fielder, the center fielder. Just outside, ball one. So the umpires establish the plate. So the you know, pitchers need to think. There have been a couple guys jammed. Maybe you switch strategies, you start coming inside if you still got some hump left in your fastball, but they're not getting that outside call. Swheeler's swung on the mist. 
5'11", 140-pound shortstop is Jackson Wheeler, just a sophomore. Well, you're batting number three in the lineup as a sophomore. That's a, that means your future is pretty good. Coach Rosen has done that before. He's, he's kind of eyeing the situation, saying, you know, Christian Scherzer is my guy to get on as a senior, and I'll, I'll hit some underclassmen behind him. You saw Zach Chapman drop the baseball and sort of picked it up and scuffed it as he picked it up. Pitchers are like that. And there it cool. is. Get a little uh, dirt on the ball. It helps you be able to uh, spin it a little bit better. I'm not saying he did it on purpose, yeah, Scott. Hey, my pitching coach at Georgetown was Dick Bosman. You couldn't let him even hold the ball for more than a couple minutes without him scuffing something. <laughs> Bosman, who pitched in the major leagues. And, uh, yeah, the Washington Senators. He was one of the pitchers when they started, when they moved to Texas. I think he was on the team. He was a great pitching coach, but he, back then they did scuff. They did a lot of that. I'm not sure it's carried on the tradition, but. Three balls and a strike, two out. Down the road. Two out three. walk, got a runner on. And to bring up the cleanup hitter. Oh man. Oh man, oh man. Aiden Laurentius. Cleanup hitter, flew out to the left fielder, yeah, leading off the second inning. 368 batter, he's got six RBIs. Now, do you see him run here with two out? Cleanup hitter up. Well, you gotta make something happen. Swinging, fouling it back. Good pitch getting right ahead. Four, two, zero. Just the kind of game we expected. A pitcher's duel. No score here. We're in the bottom half of the fourth inning. I guess a curveball here. Maybe run on the curveball. That's moving. Another fastball. And they no, he's oh, behind him. This is going to be a four play. That's your fake where he got himself so, picked off and just took off and got the stolen base. Looked like that was a called pitch out. And it just was a high pitch. And the also, catcher was thrown behind him, but it was a steal or delayed steal. It looked like maybe a late straight steal. Good job, Scott. I, I, he was picked off, yes, but picked off on purpose because he wanted him to throw behind him. Yeah, two coaches that know each other probably too well. Yeah. And, you know, it just worked. It just worked. Two balls and a strike. So the runner is in scoring position yeah. on the delayed steal. Jackson yeah, do something Wheeler. with it. You got a hard anchor by the second baseman really up the middle. The whole right side's open. And he's still open on the outside corner. Two balls and two strikes. That's Just a tough a take there. With the right side open, you get a fastball on the outside part of the plate. You gotta you gotta try to rip that to right. Key part of this game. Now you're in two two count. Pitchers count again, coming back against a really tough pitcher with two strikes on you. Outside. Still looking for that outside corner. You said, Scott, first base open. It is your cleanup hitter. Do you want to pitch to Laurentius or do you want to pitch to Selleck? Depends on your scouting report. But I, I can't see with Chapman on the mound. They're going to go around anybody, right? Down low and outside. Oh, just missed. It was a good pitch to slow. Good job by Laurentius, who took the pitch. That'll bring up Selleck. Selleck, who popped up to the first baseman back in the second inning. 278 hitter. Runners on at first and second, two out. Yeah, Evan Selich is a senior. He, he played with my son Max when you know, Max was here. I know he, he's the guy you want up. You want a senior up in a big situation in the middle of the game. Good eye. Uh, fastball. So Chapman's missed a couple times with this fastball. You just need to take a deep breath, take his time, and get, get the inning back under control. And if you're Selich, you want to try to keep him off balance. Chapman headed for Loyola University to play baseball next year. There's the fastball for the strike. One and one. On at second base is Wheeler. On at first is Laurentius. Two out. We're two out in this inning when two walks, one to Wheeler, then to Laurentius. Up high. Two balls, one strike. He's, he's gathering himself after he, he does throw one out. He usually gathers himself with a good pitch on the next pitch. So if you're Selich, this is the one to kind of get the green light on and really try to hit up the middle. Swung on and missed. He took a little off that pass, Colin. Yeah, because he wants to get it across. And you know, we're getting in the later part of the game. So you know they're tired. They don't want to pitch too much in the middle of the game. Foster bench gets up. Two strikes. Everybody's up cheering. And Selich is in a tough spot here. Probably facing some reheat. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Good job fighting it back. It was a high fastball in his eyes. 
Excel had said, too close to take. I'll take a rip at it. And high pitch looks so good coming in. Absolutely. You're going to put your bat on something. I watched Franco for the Orioles the other night hit a high pitch. It was about at his eye level. He was able to tomahawk it for a base hit. It's very difficult to get on top of that high pass ball. It can be worked on. It is a technique. and you know, It's good two-strike hitting. Two balls, two strikes. Line. That'll work. That's in the game. Base hit. That's going to score at least one. Going down to third base and holding on. And so the first one of the ball game, and Evan Savage's base hit into right field. Big hit by the senior. Boy, I tell you, that's hanging in there, fighting off a two-strike fastball, and, and then getting something you can put the bat head on and driving it into the right center gap. So one nothing the lead, and the runner still at first and third. First hit of the ball game for the uh, Patterson Mill Huskies. That'll bring Grant Morlock out to the mound to check on his hurler. So the first run of the game is scored here in the bottom of the fourth inning with two outs, and there was two outs and nobody on the walk. And how many coaches have told you a walk will kill you? It will, especially in the middle of the order, because you're what you'd like to do there is get the last out and split the batting order in half, right? So that you don't have a one, two, three, four, five situation. You have a one, two, three, four, five, six situation. But it didn't work. You know, the Patersonville did a good job. It's what they want to do is get that two out runner on. Now you got some fireworks, right? Falston just went out and talked about, what are we going to do? First and third situation, Matt Roseland's got more plays up his sleeve. Well, actually, he's got his short sleeve on today, but he's got <laughs> more pitches, more more tricks up his sleeve than any other coach. So Falston's probably going to be well prepared. If, if you're Patterson Mill, you got one run. Let's try to get another, right? Insurance run. Will a double steal be in the offing? Something's up. Nothing here. He's swinging on the first pitch. Strike one. Scherzer grounded out to the third baseman back in the second inning. So Falston had been moving along. Chapman with nine up, had one walk, but that guy was thrown out on a stealing attempt. Yeah, he's an impressive pitcher. He just had a run scored on him, comes right back with a fastball strike. So he's not going to freak out here. He's, he's on time. There's a little blooper. It's going to go over the second baseman head for a base hit. The run will score. Coming in from third base is the interest. That ball just got over Fox's head at second base. Yep, it had a little bit of extra helium in it. Just kind of stayed up, stayed up high. Not hit hard, but hit in the exact right spot. Nothing Fox could do about it. So the second run scores. The RBI hit by Scherzer, bringing up now Caleb Heyman. Runners on it first and second. Yeah, it was a good job, Coach Roseland, holding Evan Selich there at, at second. Yeah, Evan had picked up the coach early and knew not to run into that third out at third base. Let's let this inning drag out, right? Yeah, get good the pitch hitter. count up for yeah, Chapman. Yeah, sure, and Caleb's a big boy. I mean, if he gets a pitch he can handle, he was the guy that was right on a few. He struck out, but he was right on a few first time up. 6 295-pound senior catcher. Yep, chokes up a little. I played with an all-state wrestler at Georgetown that used to choke up, and he was he also wore 11, as a matter of fact. How about that? Big first baseman, one of the strongest guys I ever played with. He's the guy I told you I saw check swing and crack an aluminum bat in half. Wow. And uh, never let us forget it. Now, there was a major did. leaguer who choked up, but it doesn't count. Barry Bonds, because yeah. Yeah, he didn't need to hold the end of the bat as strong as he was, and I will leave it at that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> one ball, one strike. And two balls in a strike. Two outs now. That's a good hitter's count here. And Falston needs to, you know, it looks like the ball's coming out, so Falston needs to be ready to make a play. Get out of the inning. They got forces everywhere. Selich on at second base. Ethan Schertz are on at first. It's a nice take there. That's a tough pitch to take when you're a hitter, right? Look good. Three balls and a strike. But that's that high one that they, you know, has not been called. So, and Caleb's the catcher, right? So he knows that. Lays off. Hitters count. Three and one. Up a oh, boy. Oh, ball four. That'll load the bases. Three walks in the inning by Chapman. Moving up to third base is Selich to second is Ethan Scherzer. We have the bases loaded, and that'll bring up the number eight hitter in the lineup, Travis Hemelt. Travis, who flew out to right field on that nice play made by right fielder Aiden Koster, the little diving catch that he made back in the, uh, in the third inning. Look out, two! 
Good job by Jake Bogdan going out there. As you're, you know, I've, I've mentioned that the Bogdan's no baseball, and he went out, calmed the pitcher down a little. This, you got to do that at this point just to give him a breather. He's thrown a lot of pitches, and things are a little out of hand if you're false, and you need to get this final out. Big situation here. Strike one, taking that fastball. One strike. Timolt, 5'11", 160 pounds, 100, uh, 182 batting average on the year. Freshman out right field, just a freshman. Ground ball, third base. Tough hop, you got to it, though. And so of course, it's low. It's the third baseman. As you said, by the first baseman, two runs were still in the air. And Scott, had he thought about it, he just needed to go there and step on third base for the force out. Doesn't do it, makes the throw to first base wildly, and two runs score. I think his momentum was going in that direction, so he took that option. It was just a little low and couldn't be dug. So, you know, it's, it's for Zach Chapman, he's pitched well enough. Um, and it looks like they are making a move. Um, you know, strategy here, obviously, he's your pitcher. It's a 4 nothing game. Four runs an inning constitutes a big inning, right? Anything more than three is usually a big inning. So they get a big inning, and maybe Falston's thinking, hey, we can bring him back later in the week or next game, I don't know, but they are making the move and going to number eight, who is? Looking at my, uh, let's see. We'll have to, we don't get the changes up here, but that looks like a straight substitution yeah. with maybe. It's Paul Jones, a right-hander. Yeah. Paul in 11th grader in his first year. So they could be doing a pitching change for an inning maybe reinserting Chapman in another position next inning and bringing in another pitcher, or it's just a straight sub. So Paul Jones comes in to pitch here with two out in the bottom of the fourth inning. Yep, and you close the book on Chapman, but he, he did well, he pitched well. And you look at how this inning started for him. Um, he was in the driver's seat, you know? He started out with two outs. Got the two most dangerous guys, one and two, Scherzer and Segetti out. And then he moved into the, the walk that hurt him with Jackson Wheeler. And then another walk. And so it was two back-to-back -back walks. Um, and then Evan Selich with the really big hit with, with two strikes on him, getting the bat head around and driving a pitch into right field. That that really hurt. And then that little humpback uh, drive by Ethan Scherzer got the second run in, and then the big two uh, run error there uh, by the third baseman on the wild throw. Yeah, tough play, but again, as a, an infielder or wherever you're playing, you say, okay, if I get the ball, you know, what am I gonna do with it? And the big advantage is you could take the short throw, even throw home if you wanted to, to get the force out. Said he threw the first base. It was an attempt uh, by the first baseman, Finley Jordan, to corral the ball, wasn't able to, and so two runs score. And right. runners are still on first and third with a 4 nothing lead by uh, Patterson Mill. Right. You know, they did bring in a runner, I think a speed-up runner for the catcher, and that, he's at third base. I can't see the number, but we'll acknowledge that and try to look it up. I'll try to look at that number. Paul Jones, by the way, has pitched only in three and a third innings this year, foul ball to the left side. Jonah Van Janik, and he's number 12, the pinch runner uh, for Patterson Mill, but um, Jonah Van Janik wastes no time jumping on the first pitch um, for Jones, trying to get the bat head through it, fouls it off to third base. Patterson Mill's not done. They're at the top of the order on deck, so a hit here and big trouble. Nice pitch, came back across the plate. Over two now the count. We're in the fourth inning. This is the number nine hitter and also the ninth hitter to bat here in this bottom of the fourth inning. Jones comes in and throws strikes. Yeah, that's his job, right? And there's the runner. There's the runner, foul ball. You saw what the runner was doing, kind of, you know, Travis Hemmel takes a little couple steps, acts like, oh my God, what am I doing? <laughs> He's gonna <laughs> try to solicit Bogdan into a little rundown action. We saw that delayed steal earlier in the inning, which was a big uh, a big play. Yeah, it's almost a given with Patterson Mill here, trying to steal an extra run out of the inning. And if that runner on third crosses home first, there he goes. Oh boy, oh boy. Here comes the runner oh to the plate. He's gonna score. Okay. Yeah. Got him in the run though, but the run counts. That's what they wanted. Patterson Mill just wanted the runner. To, with the two strikes on, they just wanted the run. And the out is recorded, but the job is done as the run scores on the double steal. Credit to Travis Helmut. Now, you know, Foster could have talked. They, they kind of saw that play on the pitch before, but they didn't 
counter. They didn't step off and really think about what they did. The pitcher was definitely kind of jumped off the mound. Might have even been a balk, but um, in any case, Patterson Mill got exactly what they wanted to get that fifth run. That's an insurance run, but you know, you, with Coach Roseland, you know it's coming. I mean, you know it's coming. So, five runs in the fourth inning on what, two hits? Yeah, two hits, uh, three walks, an error. Looking back now. That's going to be an inning, you know, that you, you can't, in, in this kind of grudge match game, you can't give a big inning. So, And again, yeah. emphasize with two outs, nobody on base, a, a seemingly meaningless walk, okay, and then another walk, and then that big base hit, as we talked about by Evan Salich, uh, was probably the big hit of the ball game, followed up by Ethan Scherzer with a base hit, and then the two-run error, and then that run that they simply installed is the right word because they they stole it through uh, using the hit, that delayed steal. Now, obviously, if you're the pitcher, you know, you've got to run at the runner, but then see what's happening at third base. That's the runner that counts. Absolutely, and these games are tight. I used to tell the great stars teams when we played in the, the national tournaments that it's a game of blink. Every team is good, every team has great pitching. So you have to not be the team that blinks. And you know, you can credit Evan Selich right there. It's a game of blink, he did not blink. He was down two strikes and nobody was really hitting Chapman. Yeah. I mean, he had every... That was the first base hit of the game. Yeah, you had every reason to believe he was gonna strike out or at least hit something weakly, but he did not. He did not blink and he drove it in the right center. It sounded really good off the bat. And he's my MVP so far. Now let's see if Christian Scherzer can pitch with the lead yeah. because that's what this becomes now. And Joe Gazinski now, the leadoff hitter, third time he's been up. He does have a base hit. He got a hit the last time up, got as far as third base, couldn't score. And then the top of the fifth inning. Timeout is requested, but not granted. And again, the batter can request timeout, but the umpire does not have to grant it. Right, and, and it's not a bad play by Faust and trying anything they can to get a runner on and disrupt Christian Scherzer, because you know he's going to pitch downhill now. Line out in the first inning to the right fielder, then the single to left field by Kaczynski. And Scherzer has been in the dugout a while, so that could, you know, he's 2-0. It might be a little tight here, but we'll see. He's a shortstop. They get loose quickly. Fly ball, right field sector, moving, moving. It's going to be in the foul territory. It's going to be out of play. Who put that camera down there, Don? Uh, I don't, I think our director did, but the umpire and the coaches said, fine. Mm -hmm. He can be there, and if he's brave enough to be there, and Tom is a brave man. If he'd had a glove, he might have made that one. But no, he's trained not to do that. Oh. Duck and cover. Duck and cover, well. And protect the camera at all costs. You know, I, that was what we were talking about. They're hitting shirts that are the right side, but not well. So he needs to just keep remembering that. There's a shot up the, well up the middle. So much for Diving as uh, Wheeler dives for it, but can't come up with it as a base hit goes through into center field. Hardest hit of the day by Faustin and Finley Jordan. Nice job leading off. So they're, they're answering back. Now pitching with the lead, you, lead, you want to let them hit it, right? That's, that's the theory, but you don't want to let them hit it every time. Joe Krasinski now with his second hit of the game. He's two for three. That brings up Jason Fox. Fox 0 for 2, he grounded out and fanned. Let's see if Falston can get up off the mat and uh, put something together here. Strike on the outside corner. Well, you'd like nothing better than have your leadoff hitter first, Scott, if you're down. And your leadoff hitter did exactly what you wanted him to do. Yeah. We give uh, Jackson Wheeler a lot of credit to Sopper. He almost came up with that ball. Great diving attempt. Great, great diving attempt, but Kaczynski's just. That's another shot hit by the pitcher off his glove. Third first base, he's going to be out at first base is the call. What a stretch over there by Evan Selich. That ball goes from wow. one to six to yeah, three. I think Selich literally stole that play. I mean, that he looked safe to me. Yeah, he did from here. And from, I don't, from here, but there was no reaction by Falston. He, he must have been clearly out, but that stretch really made the play because there was so much steam off that ball after Scherzer got his glove on, right? Yeah. yeah, I thought he had no chance at first base. There's a fly ball into right field. Moving on at right fielder, Travis Hemmes. He's going to no, can't Just get foul. there. Foul I mean, ball. They, they need to, you know, think about the... Here's a replay we're going to see on the... You'll see this stretch, and I believe, I don't know. Let's see that again. Good job, Mark. Let's watch this play. I think he might be out. I think the foot may have been up. Watch the stretch. 
it's hard. Boy, that's it's close. Hard. It's so close. The, the folks booth. in the booth said looked out to them. Yeah, so and that's that's we pay them to be the deciding factor. Well, Dave Stewart, the uh, base umpire, let's give him credit. He called that from way out at second base, where the one base umpire has to do it. Looks like he was right on the money too. And you, know, you have no chance. I had said Finley Jordan earlier, but it was actually Joe Gazinski after his his hit. Right, so he's fast. There was no chance to get him at second. There's an inside move that uh, Sammy Stewart made famous with the Orioles back in the 60s. You normally see the right-hander do the world move. This inside move is much more effective if you've got the arm strength to do it. Sammy Stewart, it was in the 60s, didn't it? Yeah. The 60s? Yeah. I was playing when he was not like that old. Yeah, you're old. <laughs> I tell you. I thought I was a high mileage vehicle. <laughs> more than the age, it's a mileage. 60s into the 70s. I'll give you that. Jake, 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 Jake's the man to get Falston back in this. Jake has a single and a walk. He's one for one officially. Number three hitter in the lineup. The 391 hitter. Runner on at second base. Uh, Falston would love nothing better than get the, get the yeah, zero off the board. Great, exactly. Get a couple here. They got the man up to do it, Jake. This is a trading places type hit. If he can line one in the gap, trade places, get another double B in scoring position, that's the best scenario. This is a pitch they have not been getting. Three balls and two strikes. I didn't see the umpire's arm go up, but uh, Jake hung on at the plate. Three and two. This is where Christian has to throw a better one. He's shaking off a pitch. Last time he did that, he came with a fastball. Foul back. That was the fastball. Another right side. So if you're, you know, Patterson Mill, if you're going to pitch that way, which is fine, you need to really plug that 4-3 hole over there and get, you know, Evan Selich deep into the hole and move, move uh, Schertzer into the hole. It's a little fly ball into center field. Moving on it quickly is Segretti, and he'll make the catch. Michael Segretti, the ball hangs up. He makes the catch. Runner holds on at second base. Two out now. Agramani at the bat. Agramani, the cleanup hitter, walked last time up. Grounded back to the pitcher in the first inning. He's 0 for 1 officially. Had Grimani 526 on the year. Six RBIs. He would love nothing better than pick up number seven here. Three hits in the game for the Cougars. Two hits for Patterson Mill. There's the curveball. Going to move the runner up the base. Seems unimportant, but now that limits what you can do if your shirts are. You don't want to throw that curveball in the dirt again. Right. You got time. Runner up to third base is Grzynski. Yeah. I think you got to go get him. This is the Jim Palmer school of pitching, right? You, you can't be hurt by the five-run homer, so let him hit it. Foul back. One ball, one strike. Top of the fifth inning as you see our score, five nothing. It was nothing, nothing going to the bottom of the fourth with two outs and nobody on. And just like that, it's five nothing. Foul with the plate. First time we've really seen somebody work inside. You know, he got in and tied him up in there. Nice job. I want to bet he's coming back out on outside now. One ball, two A strikes. One ball and two strike pitch. Got room to waste one if he wants to. Or just keep pounding. He likes pounding that down and out. He, he wanted to live outside. It was obvious this game, or at least that's where he's pitching. Let's see where he goes. It looks like it's down and away. There it is. Foul back. It back. Good hang in there by Miguel. Yeah. Agramani right on the pitch. That's what you love about baseball. Every batter is a confrontation between pitcher and batter. Even in a nothing nothing game, you know, every play. He's fought with danger if you're the defense. Yeah, on the stage. Line shot, that's going to be caught by Segretti. What a catch. Michael Segretti lays out and takes a double away from Paulson. What a play by Michael Segretti. Yeah, and why not? I mean, the worst thing that happens there is he, they, are, they get a run and they have a two out man on second. But if you make that catch, it's still zeros. Your pitcher's out of the inning. You're saving pitch count. You know, it's a calculated risk, but 
Harrisonville's had a long history of good center fielders, and they just gobbled that one up to get out of the inning. Put a star beside that with Michael Segretti. The great thing is he got such a jump on that ball. That ball was hit into right center field, maybe, what, 30 feet away from him? He took off on the crack of the bat, laid out, made that diving catch. Yeah. That was impressive. Yeah. And, you know, you might want to start moving in. We, we talked about where Falston's hit a couple. They, they are not crushing them in the gap. So, you know, you saw Segretti take away a hit earlier. Good play by the center fielder. Another good, you know, like a little bit of Paul Blair action out there, Don. I like it. Yeah, Paul Blair. One of the most classy center fielders yes. ever. He was my minor league coach. That's right, he was, yeah. They called him the mouth. Because he did like to talk quite a bit. Oh, well, he tell you, he, he played very shallow, too. Yeah, he did. He's very confident going back on the ball. Palmer used to turn around and move him back. And, and of course, Blair, Blair would, would, excuse me, moving in. And, uh, but as soon as Palmer turned back around, Blair would come back in and say, hey, I'm playing center field. This high school game of the week proudly sponsored by APG FCU, member owned and member driven credit union, helping families in Harvard County achieve, prosper and grow. I want to thank APG FCU for you know, their support of high school baseball and high school sports. Really so happy to be back on the air and having the you know, games being played. Jumping on the first pitch. Janik, yeah. The number nine hitter hitting the fly ball into center field. He got another at bat. He was left with the plate after the double steal. Mm -hmm. So he gets in a clean slate and he tries to drive one. Showing the Janik with the fly out. He's blown out twice now, 0 for 2. He he's tried. He's Christian, tried. The, I'm sorry. He's no, go ahead. Christian's up. Christian shirts are the batter. We are in the bottom of the fifth inning. One pitch, one out. Paul Jones is the pitcher. He came in to pitch in the last inning. That's a little pop line drive into right center field. That's going to fall. Christian Scherzer showing why he's a leadoff hitter as well as a pitcher. He's now one for two. The first time up. Blew out last time. They're, they're, they're swinging. I mean, that's, uh, you know, you would think Patterson Mills going to be a little patient here, but that's Christian's job. He knows if he's ready to pitch. He's in big game pitches. He jumped on it and hit it. Now we'll see if they run. We, we talked about what would happen if a team got into the bullpen. And I'm sure Patterson Mill wants to hit the gas. This is Segretti. Now, if this were karma, Segretti would have let off the inning because they always say, the guy who makes the great defensive play leads off the next inning. Well, at least he bats this inning. Yeah, he's close. The young man who made that diving catch to save the run in center field. Over two, he fanned and flew out to center field. Actually lined out to center field last time up. With the hold at first, the right side is open. He pulled open on that pitch, but Jones is pitching middle out, so. It, you know, Segretti has an opportunity here to drive something in that hole between first and second base, and move the runner around. Michael Segretti, 5'7", 160 pound senior. Outside, coming up quickly. Jake Bogdan, he doesn't make a throw. Oh, you know, he already shot Schertzer down once, so. Yeah. Try it again, smart aleck. Right, and if you're Christian, you're like, I want to go get him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Dead ball. So back to that bunt play. So if you're saying the batter drops the bunt in fair territory and interferes with the catcher's ability to pick up the ball, even though it doesn't hit the ball, I'm calling him out. Yeah. I think if you interfere with it, and in their judgment, he didn't. It was an accidental, you know, bat drop or whatever. Yeah, right. it's, it's it's hard. I'm told no. That's a wild pitch by the catcher, moving down to second base. I'm told, though, the uh, assistant coach, Matt McCluskey, of um, architect, says he teaches his uh, batters to do that, to uh -huh. drop the bat in fair territory. I've heard that. I've heard it. Yeah, if you can get away with it, you know. Well, they shouldn't be able to. There ought to be a rule. <laughs> well, the other coach needs to tell the shortstop moving on it. That's Kaczynski. Long throw to first base. It would be wide. Yeah. Save the first base. I'm going to give him a base hit on that. That would have taken an extraordinary player to get him. Good job there by Finley Jordan trying to hold on to the base. But hold him off just a bit. Holding on at second base with Scherzer. Smart play by Scherzer not to run into an out. Yeah. 
Sure, the rules there, if you can't beat the ball, you gotta stay, and he did. Two on, one out. Yeah, I've seen coaches go to the other team, the umpire before games say, hey look, this team throws the bat after bunts, they're gonna do this, they're gonna do that, you know, keep an eye on it. So. Jackson Wheeler, the batter, outside. Wheeler last time walked, he was a young man up with two outs and nobody on, walked, stole a base, scored on that single by Selich. Yeah, he was the first run of the game, right? He was. Broke it open. Jackson Wheeler, the sophomore, number three hitter in the lineup. There's a ground ball just wide of third base. Pattersonville does some things that I don't see other teams do in Horford County. I'm not going to tell you what they are. But there's one of them going on right now, and it's, it's impressive because it, it reflects on the coach really understanding everybody's role on the field, from the guys in the dugout, to the hitter, to the fielder, to the coach staff. It's, it's well, impressive. One thing you might be talking, in my estimation, if you see a guy who has potential, you know, give him exposure early. That means you've got two more years in addition to this year. Well, that's a great pitch. Inside ties him up. So you, maybe you suffer a little bit this year with him, with inexperience. But as he gets that experience, gets that confidence, You've got a star in your junior and senior year. He wants him to grow. And I don't know what he did last year, but he, he did the same thing with my son Max. Hit him third his sophomore year. Make him grow. That's a line shot. Well, it's going to be a field. tough play. Moving left fielder and making nice the play. catch. Agramani on his horse making that catch. Of course, Scott, he didn't do anything last year because he didn't play. Dang it. Yeah, that's right. He didn't have a chance as a freshman. Got so the line out is recorded. Well, he put oh, good, good two out swing. You know, he oh, put, put the oh, wood man. on it, put the aluminum on it. And, not again. A nice play out in left field by Miguel yes, I learned the game of running it down. Lincoln University had the money headed for next year. Oh, yeah? Good yep. for him. Yep. Right up the Route 1. Yep, near Oxford, right? Yep. Laurentius now the batter. He walked also and scored last inning. Again, part of those uh, two walks with two outs, setting the stage with a single by Selich. Off that outside corner, ball one. It was a nothing-nothing game into two outs in the bottom of the fourth inning, and now as you see, it's five-nothing, all five runs scoring in that uh, bottom of the fourth inning. Patterson though, looking to try to add on if they can. Paul Jones outside. Jones has an inflated ERA, but it's really not fair because he's pitched only a couple of innings this year. with a great stop. Bogdan earning his money there. We were talking about catchers before. I, 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 loved, I loved catching uh, because you were in the pitch every, uh, every pitch. You controlled the game. Uh, but it was not an easy position to play. You gotta have a good one. They touch it more than anybody else, so. Inside, how did that, I think it might have. It looks like it nicked him. Yeah, they're gonna send him down to first base with the uniform. Thank you. Oh, young ladies gathering my papers, which are going everywhere. <laughs> Aren't you nice? Thank you so much. Proving the uh, spectators are more than just spectators. They're active participants in saving the commentator who doesn't tie down his papers. Thank you so much. She's been a do-gooder at this field for a long time, so she's just playing a role. Oh, really? Absolutely. You know her? Absolutely. Okay. Well, she did a nice job, and I'm going to put them somewhere where they won't fly away again, I promise. <laughs> You've got a lot of them spread out, so I'm not sure that's a safe bet, but right on cue. Ethan Schertzer comes up. Ethan Schertzer, who got that big single last time. At Evan, Evan Selich. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Evan Selich. So you're all Excuse just me. combobulated I with was the papers because my everywhere. papers were going. Thank you, Evan Selich, who got the base hit. Yep. Ethan Schertzer also got a base hit, but his came after the big decisive hit by Selig. Evan's been patient up here. He's seen a lot of pitches. Of course, had the big hit that we talked about, but Bases he's got ducks on the pond again. Two you know? outs. He can, he can have a, a week here by driving in a couple more runs. You know? This is really a good opportunity for him. One Jones ball is, and one strike, sorry, Scott. No, I was just say, Jones has thrown a lot of pitches this inning. Patterson has a tendency to do that. They drag out the inning. One ball, one strike. There's a fly ball center field, Lipinski. Well, it's gonna hang up. Lipinski makes the catch. Colin Lipinski, 
making the catch in medium center field, so the out is recorded. No runs score, although they do load the bases. No runs on two base hits. There were no errors. There were three runners left on base. We have now played five full innings with a 5 nothing lead by the Patterson Mill Huskies. Scott, what have you seen so far? Well, it's... We talked about the pitcher's duel, and if you could get one of them in trouble and get to the bullpen, you know, the advantage would clearly swing to yours. But it's just that one big inning. You know, it's, it comes down to Evan Selich hitting that two-strike pitch hard and in the gap to drive in the runs and, and start the inning. So that's what it takes. Um, and, and Patterson Mills is a tough team to try to play small ball with because they've always historically been been on top of of the. Uh, the county with you know winning winning close games yeah. and coach Roseland's record speaks for itself you look at the banners out there on the, the outfield wall 2015 regional championships 2016 division county championships regional championship again you know they, 2017 again you know they just they pile it on you and they do it you have to remember this is the the 1A school Scott yeah. not to interrupt but uh, wave to your wife and oh, there we, we are on camera. camera hello there it's a nice wide shot. Uh, I insist on that. Uh, yeah. Good. It's better. And we're socially distancing. It, it's like in uh, Field of Dreams where they ask for uh, Pooch what would be good to try to make her look good. And the, the lady said a lot of night games. Right. Yeah. Right. Again, well, if they're shooting us from the center field camera, if we're just little specks, that's fine with us, right? Jimmy Fox, we talked about him, the great uh, uh, Boston Red Sox, a Hall of Famer who is related to Del Fox, who is the grandfather of Jason Fox, who is, I guess, if I separate a couple generations, is a, a, a uncle, a great uncle, uh, who was the man who, after whom Jimmy Dugan was patterned uh, for the movie Big of Her Own. A great movie, a Tom Hanks classic. Yeah, one of my favorite movies of all time. Not as good as that thing you do, but it's close, close. <laughs> Who starred the Edgewood High School? Hall John Sheck. Favorite. There we go. John Sheck. Give him a little plug. Yeah. John Sheck, uh, your classmate? No, he a couple was my years. next door neighbor. Yeah, he was a class of 87, I guess. Great. Colin Lipinski now, who made that catch, and we talked about outstanding defensive plays uh, leading off the next inning. Well, Colin made that catch in center field and now he'll lead off looking to try to get on the board he's fanned twice but up twice strike out swinging once looking the next time he's got some wheels probably if he's a center fielder so if he gets on here they could try to spark the comeback they're running out of time there's a shot into center field moving back on it he is a center fielder and that's a segretti he made that great catch in the last inning just runs him down but he is a i tell you what i like about him the jump he gets on the ball he made that thing look routine yeah, that's it. He'd have taken one step in, which in which outfielders sometimes do. Great. Yeah, they had you know, a lot of you know, Matt Sprouse, Max, a lot of these center fielders that they've had. And I guess if you got a ballpark it's that you need to control the gaps in, it's great to have a center fielder that can run them down. Finley Jordan. And falston has got a much smaller field. Look out. Oh, it hits the screen. I didn't know where that ball was, and I was getting ready to dive under the table. <laughs> it's, my, it's my answer to everything at my age. Dive under the table, you're safe there. Probably not. <laughs> I want to thank Matt Roslin and the folks here. There's a shot in the left here. That's going to be a base hit. You just throw, throw those. It wasn't well hit. You know, let them kind of go base by base here and just keep throwing your strikes if you're number four out there on the mound. Fourth hit of the game for. I want to thank Matt for giving us or loaning us the pitcher's uh, screens, protecting our camera people down the left and right field lines. Yeah, I tell you, there's no better coach in the county to respond to what we need and, and be on top of things than Coach Rosen. But, you know, Falston's going to have to peck. They're going to have to go base by base. Lance Abel's now the DH. Lance has been on twice, both on errors. He reached on an error to the shortstop and an error to the second baseman. Right. Neither got... time was he able to come around. I don't know what Christian Scherzer's count is for pitches, but he can just let him move station to station here and be in pretty good shape. And that's a nice pitch. Billy tied Abel's up there. Abel's a 312 hitter, a 500 on base percentage, four RBIs, a double. Austin coming in with a team batting average of 302, so they hit the ball well, but uh, they're coming up against a tough customer today. Yes. And Mr. Christian's 
taking the third strike. Two out now. Aiden Coster now coming up, Aiden the right fielder. Aiden reached on the fielder's choice and flew out to center field and chose the two. Like gonna, Pitch count's coming into effect here. 105 pitches, if you don't know the rules, Scott, maybe you can explain it better than I. Well, I think what they're, what they might be doing is even if he's not at his count, they might want to use him again. And they think, well, we've got a lead, we've got a five run lead. Um, there's, there's two outs in this inning, which means mm -hmm. Falston's down to seven outs in the game. So the calculus is if we think we've got a relief pitcher that can come in and get this job done, we're gonna go hand the ball off and save our ace, save some pitches in the tank for our ace. Um, now, you know, bringing, bringing in a new pitcher is risky, but you do have the lead. Now, Travis Hemlet's gonna be that pitcher. They're gonna hand the ball over to him and let him clean up the game. So it's not a bad, it's a strategic move, but um, you know, Coach Roseland gets paid to make those decisions, and it's tough to take Christian Scherzer out, but you look at his final day when he spread out, he had another hit this inning. So, you know, every inning they might have had a hit. I think they had four hits in five innings, but, four, three. you know, they're spread out, and he was making them go station to station. So it was masterfully done. He didn't probably have his best stuff, but he's so consistent, and now he gets to go play shortstop. So um, we'll see the other moves they make. But like they'll probably move the third baseman over to first. Looks like he's got... Five strikeouts, I'm counting them up. Let's see, one, uh, two, three, and, and four, five uh, strikeouts. And I think he has two walks. He had two walks in the same inning, so five strikeouts and two walks uh, and giving up four hits and no runs at this point. The two runs on base are his responsibility. Right, and, and they're gonna, one run on base is his responsibility. We'll have to look and see where they've moved people around, but Hemlet coming in, he's a freshman, so they're handing the ball for a freshman, which is not unusual. Patterson Mill, you see those banners on the walls. They're a small school, so they do play freshmen. It's not unusual, and I remember times when my son Max was here, they had, there were six guys who would have been starters on the team were at the Calvert Halls and the Archbishop Curleys, so they do get recruited out of the area, but they still, every year, have one of the best teams in the county and in the region. So Travis Himmel comes in to pitch, the freshman who was a right fielder. And we'll try to get those moves for you. You do know that Christian Schutzer has moved to shortstop. Brings up Aiden Koster, Koster the right fielder. Lefty on lefty, I'm not sure exactly what Roseland was thinking about that, but it happened. it's yeah. never good if you're a left-hander facing a left-hander, unless you're uh, Mullins this year who seems to own left-handers. The teal uniforms are a little tough to tell the numbers, but I think it was Jackson. Really there was the pickoff. Oh, boy. That's why a left-hander. And he's well executed. And two outs, lefty on the mound. You have nowhere to go. You're down by five runs. You've got to anchor to the bag because lefties are hard to read. But the nice thing about Patterson Mill is after that rundown started, you know, Evan Selich immediately blasted off the base, got to the runner, and at shortstop, Christian Searcher, shortened the yeah. rundown by coming off the bag into the throw so that his tag was quick and they were out. And yeah, Scott Finley Jordan never moved. I, I don't think he was intending to steal. No, no. He was just so surprised by that lefty move. And we all know that lefties can't walk. It's an impossibility. Well, especially in the major walk. leagues, yeah. And he picked off that uh, first base. So that inning comes to an end. No runs, one hit, no errors. There were no runners left on base. We've now played Five and a half innings, and we're in the bottom of the sixth with the score of five nothing. Five nothing for Patterson Mill. This high school game of the week proudly sponsored by APG FCU, a member owned and member driven credit union, helping families in Hartford County achieve, prosper, and grow. Again, want to thank Matt Roslin and his staff. I say staff, that's kind of funny. <laughs> the people who work for him. Matt was out here, I got here about eh, 2.30 or so. Matt was already out here, lying in the field, working. Uh, we were joking because my principal, Jay Walter Potter, whom I just loved, uh, gave me six period off. And I thought, well, that's ah. great. I thought, that's great. I'm a history teacher. He gets, then it dawned on me, oh yeah, so I can go out and lie in the field before go. the game started. Yeah, I do it. Coach Williams used to have us do it yeah. during study hall or well, whatever. Well, see, that was smart. Uh, you know, I wasn't that smart at all. I, I didn't have the intelligence to con somebody into doing it. I went out and did it myself like a dummy. Work experience, huh? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, some people say that's the only work I ever did while I was teaching. Ah. Mean people, hateful people. <laughs> uh, so 
So now we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Ethan Schertzer now the batter. He's in the second baseman. You uh, you look at the way the game has stabilized. You give you know Coach Grant Morlock. I know we've talked a lot about Coach Rosalind. His team's up, and but Coach Morlock did a really good job deciding when to pull his ace. You know it's not easy to do. Yeah. But Jones has come in. He put out the fire. He got him out of the inning. He's pitched well. Um, you know he, he, he's kept him in the game. There's yeah. he, he's got hopefully given his team a chance to score some runs. They just haven't done it yet. Of course, they only have one more chance to do it. Seventh inning is. Right. All we have in high school ball. Ooh, inside, Plugsy right in the number one. Or slightly below. So hit by pitch. Ethan Scherzer says, it ain't going to hurt. I'm going to stand here, turn my back, take it on the uh, backside, and I'll go down to first base. Twice he's been on first base now. He grounded out to third. Got a big base hit, an RBI last time up. Of course, we talked about Selich getting the big, big hit. But Scherzer followed up and made it three nothing with that hit. Big lead. Patterson Mill takes big leads. Um, they daring you to throw. Remember yeah. they had that delayed steal earlier. Sure, but you know what? What is neat to see the key to taking a big lead is knowing how to get back, right? Because no kid is going to take too big a lead. They're going to be scared. But if you teach them how to get back, they feel comfortable out there. Crossover step, one dive, ground ball, third and base hit. Uh, he was that due. five and a half hole. He was due. I, I really think he looked good at the plate. Even. Every at bat, he looked better and better, and not surprised to see him rip one through. Halem with fanned, and then last time up walked and scored. This time gets a single to the left. He's one for two officially. Runners on at first and second. Nobody out. Bringing up the number eight hitter. Travis, Pitcher. Travis Hemelt. Yep. H E M E L T. Chance to help Hemelt. Him. Help himself out here with a hit. Since and a he's freshman, the pitcher of a, a left-handed thrower batting right-handed. Yeah, Al Bumber. No, Al Bumber. Oh, that's right. He was the other way. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's going to help get two runners up. Ricky Henderson is the only really big Cleon Henderson, Cleon Jones really for the Mets, but that doesn't count. But Ricky Henderson, who batted right and threw left, just about the only major leaguer I can think of, you know, who had that combination. You just don't see it. One, because it exposes your left arm if you're a pitcher. The last thing you want to do is to put your left arm out there to perhaps be hit. Who is Ricky Henderson? Ricky Henderson, the great stolen base leader? Of course. You were just joshing me there. He's getting... my favorite player. Well, Ricky was uh, Ricky. Was Ricky. Redefined the game. He did that. All-time base stealer record. And he had a lot of pop out of the leadoff spot. He did. Travis, who has flown out to left and had that ground ball that the arrow was made on that really sort of turned this game officially around when it was only three to nothing and the arrow made it five, or actually it was two nothing, the arrow made it four nothing, and then that double steal, that delayed double steal made yeah. it five nothing. Right, prolong the inning, get a steal a couple runs, inch them out. Second and third, nobody out. Ground ball back to the pitcher, scooped up. Nice, he's got him. Ooh. He had him at third, but instead takes the out at first. But that was a nice scoop by Jones. Gets the out at first, runners hold on. Yeah, he really was so quick on that with great reactions. He had Christian Scherzer. Yeah, he could have turned I mean, him perhaps. Uh, Ethan Scherzer off. And we just yes, we had him at third, but took the wise play, got him out at first. To bring up uh, Jonah Buchanik. Jonah, who was 0 for 2, flown out twice. Runner still at second and third squares. Safety squeeze, fouls it back. Scott, the difference between safety and suicide? Oh, the runner's anchoring at third to see the ball down and see what happens. We saw that in the Haverty Grace Aberdeen game where uh, they won the ball game. Did uh, Haverty Grace on the uh, suicide, on the safety squeeze? The runner was able to come in from third base. Mm -hmm. Falston was now wisely so. Wide of third. So they're, you know, you get in this situation, there's obviously, they're up five, nothing, but it's a lot of coaches are like, well, why are you doing that five runs? But it's because it's a short season. You've got to practice things. Mm -hmm. And you also respect Falston. I mean, I'm not rolling. Falston can score five runs. They're a good hitting team, as you've said, and especially when you're into your bullpen. So they're trying to get the extra runs in because they are worried they don't have enough. And it's not a bad, you know, the first time they do a safety squeeze. Um, but they were doing the fake bunt slash, trying to get the rotation on by Faustin and hitting into the rotation. So, little cat and mouse. Yeah, and you put uh, Tony Schweitzer, the third baseman, on a swivel. 
You know, what's they do? Come in, go back. Fly ball center field, moving over there. Rapinski tagging up. Rapinski waiting. Here comes the throw to the plate. Nope, he goes right back. Oh, great play by Rapinski. In on one hop. Interesting. That, that, you know, medium depth, really good throw home. Uh, well executed. You know, why not hit a fly ball to center field with one out? But you, know, you look at the, uh, the throw that was one hop and low. It could have been cut if it needed to be cut, but it was on time. And, it was quick. Really, really nice throw by Carmel Hines. They're going to walk Christian Scherzer the, where you don't have to throw any four pitches. Just say, take your base. And so Scherzer goes down to first on the intentional walk to load the bases to bring up Michael Segretti. And if you're Michael Segretti, you say, walk him to get to me. Watch what I'm going to do. Bases loaded, two out. Segretti has a one for three day. Interesting strategy. That means you've got to force out anywhere. Yeah, it's kind of a no-brainer, right? Pitch to one of the best hitters in the county or not. And yeah, you go from a 450 hitter to a 214 hitter. Right, and you are and you get that force. You pick up the force anywhere. And you got to get out of the inning. But yeah, a walk here will score a run. He's got confidence in Jones, and Jones has had good command. Now, I jinxed him and fell behind 2-0, <laughs> but I, I do. I think he'll come back on Let this. the record show it was yeah. Scott Elliott, well, who, the announcer, Jinx, who said, oh, he's had great control. I did it after he threw two balls, I but good Michael Segre to Segretti's um, credit. credit, he <laughs> gets walks. I know them. Yeah, coming in early, he draws walks, and, and some guys just do that. Yeah. That's why he hits in that second spot, right? Uh -huh. Yep. So it's cat and mouse, and you don't know. I mean, I, I would have done it too. I have confidence in Jones, but you got a guy up there that for some reason is a portal for walks. Three balls, no strikes. Got to be a strike, and it is. Three and one. It's great to have those guys in the two spot because they can your third hitter up oh, yeah. know, pretty much all the time with men on. Yeah. What's his own base percentage? 791. Pretty cool. And when you have, have a 214 batting average, you got to be doing some things to get that OBP up that high. Right. He scored 10 runs, leads the team in uh, scoring runs. It's because of all those walks, man. He's, he's on base. Four, four. And so the run comes in, the RBI walk by Michael Segretti. Strategy backfires as the run uh, score. Uh, uh, my name. Six nothing now. Yeah, yeah. That'll bring up the number three hitter, Jackson Wheeler. Wheeler is a sophomore. Walked, scored in the fourth inning. Routed out in the first. Flew out in the uh, sixth inning. I should say in the fifth. We're now in the bottom of the sixth inning. Swung on mm -hmm. and missed. Pitch inside. We haven't seen any pitchers live in there today, but good way to get ahead. They talk about that inside pitch being a lost pitch. It's hard to throw inside you know, effectively. Hey, it was tough, you know, when I was growing up, a lot of pitchers did. Two seamers in, and even in college, I saw a ton of it. On the outside corner? No, off the outside corner. One ball, one strike. Change-ups in. Everything was in. You know, of course, I lived in the era of the slider, so they were looking to come in on you, then go away with the slider. But So slider cut fastball. Yeah, it's got it's to break sharp and quick and small, and tight. They call it cut fastball now, and it's a little ground ball. In our day, it was the slider. It's a, you know, basically the same pitch. Maybe a, the slider goes a couple more inches. Maybe it's a little slower. It's like the old fork ball uh, that they threw, that Elroy faced through, which is now no, split finger. Now the split finger, yeah. yeah. It's different, you know, types of grips and how you make the ball move. Bases loaded, two out. Foul back. Count remains at one ball and two strikes. You know, and you, Jones let the last one get away. But again, I would, Michael Segretti gets walked. So, but he's right back on top. Jones is right back on top of a three hitter, one, two, yeah. two out. So you, you, know, you really got to give Segretti credit for drawing the walk, but I, I don't think Jones is pitched bad, badly at all. No, he's, um, he, you said he came in and then sort of stabilized the situation. Right. That's what you want. Swung on in this, he gets the final out of the inning. So Strikes the third hitter out. He gives up one run, but he does get out of the inning. So Patterson Mill and ending, they get one run on, let's see, one base hit. There was no errors, and there were three runners left on base. We've now played six full innings with the Patterson Mill Huskies up by six to nothing.
This is it for Falston. They've got to come up with six runs to tie or else they will lose their third straight game. And uh, Pattis Mill, on the other hand, will win their third straight. How do you lose four, uh, three of your first four and then come back and go on the winning streak? Well, you're, you're confident. Um, you know, honestly, knowing that team well, they've done it before. It's, you do start out a little slow, especially when you have a team infrastructure like Patterson Mill does. They, they really grind games out. Everybody's important. They, they have trick plays. They have defenses. So it takes a while to get that set, especially in high school where you don't have a lot of spring training. So, you know, you might argue they're never fast out of the gate. Yeah. And they want to end well because in their world, it's great to win the county, but you go into the 1A state finals, it's a whole different thing because you look at the pitchers. You got to remember how the county's set up. A lot of the schools they compete against are schools on the Eastern Shore right. and in Southern Maryland that really are small schools, but they have great baseball. There's no lacrosse down there. Yeah. When you go down the Eastern Shore, there's nobody playing lacrosse. So every athlete in your school is playing baseball, and they have D1 pitchers every year coming right at you. 6'3", six, 6'2", six, six, two, 200 pounds, throwing fast. And Scott, let me correct myself. It's a four-game winning streak that Patterson Mill comes in on, and so they're looking to make it five straight after losing three of their first four. So they really have turned it around. Yeah, and they'll, they'll hit the stretch part of the season. But, you know, Falston's not, they just, the they one bad inning is what this is coming yeah. down to. They couldn't yeah. stabilize that inning. but And they couldn't get on the scoreboard. It's a, right. you, you can't win the game unless you can score. That's, a, that's Uncle Don giving his philosophical, you can't win unless you score a run. Unless the other team quits, which is probably not. Forfeit, yeah, I guess. You, you got yeah, that hedged. Yeah. <laughs> has a little fly ball moving tough, back tough short play. Ball, coming in left fielder and the left fielder will make the catch and that is Jonah and Vajonic who comes in and makes the catch and you could see that uh, that uh, Jackson Wheeler was looking for somebody to call him off yeah. <laughs> you call the ball please and Vajonic comes in and makes the catch I don't know how I do it, but I'm, I'm in the sixth inning, you know, because I, I don't keep score. <laughs> but thank God there's a scoreboard. I, and, and I have you. Well, yes, yes, you do. I am here for you, <laughs> which shows that you are in a lot of trouble. And, and, but you've never made a mistake with the scoreboard, Don. And, you know, we're getting on in age, but you still don't. We were, we were talking just, you mentioned I was talking to, to Matt Rosalind before the game. When I, was, when I was coaching, I had a DH and a regular batter in the same spot in the order. I had so just, you did make one mistake. Oh, I really messed up. So I went okay. to my scorekeeper and I said, go over to their scorekeeper and just tell them that we're going to bat the guy in, in the seventh spot. We're going to move him to eighth spot. So the other kid who was keeping score said, oh, OK. <laughs> I think it. Oh, this is embarrassing. Coach Morrison has it's put okay. two people in the same spot. It's OK. That ball coming up. Nice play at third base. That's Laurentius who made that play. I think it's Laurentius. They did some moving around. It is, uh, yeah, Aiden Laurentius still there at third base. Yep. Who makes the play. It's rock steady there. That ball was a tough hop, too. It came up. He made the hop, made the catch, and made the throw to first. So, Boston down to its last out of the ball game. Sun has gone away and uh, gotten a little bit uh, less humid here tonight. It was nice, and it was very warm earlier. Joe Gazinski. Half swings. Gazinski, who has two for three, he lined out to right field in the first, singled in the third, and also singled in the fifth. Got as far as third base both times, not able to score. You can see why he's leading off, and he's the anchor of their infield, too. He's a good ball player. He is that. Shortstop, uh, senior. One of the captains on the team. Over the third base, nope, just foul. Looking for that double down the yeah, line. He's looking to get another hit. He's going to help us 421 average here, any way you look at it, but um, he's not looking to go down. He's still fighting. You got to give Coach Morlock credit. The Falston team's still in. <laughs> still yeah, in it. She would never guess they're down 6 0 with two outs in the last inning. Hamilton uh, pitching. He came in to pitch the last inning. He's done a good job in relief here. And, you know, Falston does well in the 2A, too. They, they are, One, you know, they're not, they lose this game, but they're gonna, they'll come back and finish strong, and they've got a really good pitcher in Chapman, so they'll be a team to watch in the playoffs also. I wish we covered those games, Tom. Uh, I'd love to. Fun. I would love to, yeah. Falston will fall to 5-3 and three with this loss, assuming that they don't come back. Patterson Mill will go to 6-3. and three. They'll win their fifth game in a row. 
In Teal, even. In Teal, yeah. When uh, Wayne Tebow, who was the original principal, uh, they chose the teal color. I can remember the ladies loved it. The gentlemen, not so much. Well, they did, you know, I've seen it. They, it, they traditionally go black and white or black, silver and white, and then there's a little bit of teal yeah, in the uniform kind of, somewhere. They call it their complimentary color. Right. But just like the Orioles, when they broke out the bright orange jerseys, this is Patterson Mills Wednesday night jersey, right? Back in the day, the Orioles went to all orange uniforms. They were awful. And Boot Powell said, I look like a giant carrot. <laughs> and he That's did. a big carrot. And he did. It was awful. It was back in the back in the seventies when it was psychedelic and everybody was going, you know. Sure. It's right. when the White Sox went to the shorts and they had the top that looked like a tuxedo. Yes. Awful. Kamitsky would do anything. Just awful. Well, Falston's got a little bit of Astro vibe going here. Looks good. Yeah. Found to do something with orange and brown as your colors, and they, they throw a little gray in there. It looks good, yeah. sharp. You know, it's amazing with the uniforms these guys get. What every year or so, right? Back when we played, it was. I was honored to wear a uniform that someone seven years ahead of me had. Our, our uniforms, don't hit, because I want to tell this story. <laughs> our uniforms were hand-me-down from the Army. They were flannel, and they were made for soldiers, like grown people. It's a good Edgewood story. Thank See, you, thank you for that hit, Joe. Joe allowed me to right. continue the story. Right. Joe's going to get a hit, you know that. There He's three go. for four. He is three for four. Joe Gazinski, you are my, all, you are my, my uh, MVP. He's got no that. clue what the score is. He just so anyhow, it out. I'm pitching and I have on this uniform that makes me look like a scarecrow. There's no question about it. Bel Air, we're playing. They have their tailored uniforms and they're saying scarecrow, scarecrow. You know, doing this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but you stomp. After we one hit them, I didn't hear the scarecrow cry anymore. They looked good going back to the bus. Hey, and that's 1961, so you know there's nobody alive who remembers that. So yeah. I could tell that story with complete confidence. There's that pickoff move again. Joe Gazinski will have none of it. You know, yeah. He's finished a good day, and he's played a good game at short. You know, he's Falston's looking for just do something here, get get some momentum, and then the next game, even if you lose this one, you at least ended on a good note. Hamilton, again, who is a freshman, came in to pitch. Now the bench says, uh, concentrate on the batter. Don't be concerned. You're yeah, up by 6 nothing. Keep that concentration. you got two outs. Don't lose, especially with Mantle first. Now he's going to go from the stretch. So Two balls, no strikes. Down low. And remember, you're getting to the meat of the lineup here. This is Jason Fox. If I didn't announce him, I should have. Uh, Jason is over 3, would love to come up. Uh, with a base hit. Remember, he's the last time up. He hit it off the pitcher to the shortstop, the first on that very close play at first. There's a strike, go back to first. And safely is Gazinski. Gazinski's got it timed. He's just knows exactly how far he has to be. And he's a player, there's just no question about it. Three balls and a strike. Seems a big payoff pitch here for him. Foul back, we go to three to two. Had to set Kaczynski free at first base, he'll be off and running. Great. Five runs in the fourth, one run in the fifth. Well, Hemel looks good. I mean, it's nice to have an arm, a lefty arm, if you're Patterson Mill, especially a young one. Check that one run in the sixth for Patterson Mill. There is your mistake on my scorebook. Oh, okay. Total you, you corrected it, so it's not a mistake. Oh, okay. Ball four. Two runners on now. Bring up the third hitter in the lineup, Jake Bogdan. Jake, who has walked, single, flown out. He's one for two officially. Runners at first and second, two out. Three ninety-one hitter is Bogdan coming in. Good look there at Hemelt. A nice little changeup. He had uh, Bogdan tied in knots. Few check swings here on Hemmelt, so I don't know what he's throwing, Don, because you and I can't see, but it's got to be a little hard to pick up. We're also getting towards the twilight yeah. period here. It's getting the cloud covers maybe somewhat of a factor. Turn the lights on. Oh, wait a minute. Give them time. I was they, they built say, this park. It's coming around. That was my, uh, that was my next statement. Yeah, Knowing Matt Rosalind and the ability to raise funds here. Right. Might not. Be a bad idea. By the way, Ethan and Christian uh, are brothers or shirts that we talked about. Their younger sister, Abby, in eighth grade, does all the books for uh, Patterson Mill. So 
the Scherzer family certainly contributes in many ways. Ground ball, third baseman, top hop into left field. That run will score, and the shutout will be no more. Very top hop to third baseman Laurentius. Yeah, it's, you know, we, we, 21 straight innings coming into this game without giving up a run. Um, that's a tough way to lose it with two outs in the last yeah. inning and yeah. error at third, but it, you know, it's, it's tough, it was a tough hop. And a tough hop, yeah. I mean, all you can do is just come in and hope you can get it on the short hop. He didn't, he got it between hops. So the run scores for Boston, it's not a shutout. They're down just 6-1 now as Miguel Agramani comes to the plate. Cleanup hitter. Agramani, 526 on the year. He lined out on a great play by Segretti. Remember, Segretti laid out and made that diving catch back in the fifth inning that saved a run. Yeah. Well, if you're false, then you gotta push the issue here a little bit. You know, you get, this is not totally undoable. Um, got a freshman on the mound. Yeah. Um, take some pitches. And if, what, if you're Matt Rosalind, at what point do you consider bringing Scherzer back into the ballgame as a pitcher? They can't re-enter him as a pitcher. You can't. Well, that's the new rule. Well, they, they can't, but they have no Scherzer. So, you know, you, yeah. they'll just go to a closer. Go back to first base. Almost throw away. Good job of diving back to first base is uh, Jake Bogdan. I wasn't aware of that. So you can't bring your pitcher back in uh, uh, once he's, even if he's yeah, still in the ball. Yeah, I think you, in some tournament ball, you can, or it used to be, I forget what they call that rule, but but you wouldn't, you know, otherwise you could bounce him around and pull him for certain hitters. I used to see a strategy in tournament ball, and again, tournament ball gets crazy, but they would pitch their best pitcher against your one, two, three, four hitters, yeah. and then take out the pitcher and come in with somebody else and wait for your best part of your lineup again. So you won, now it's 3-2. All right, so he's battling back, Hummel's battling back. Runners can take off with the pitch now, 3-2, two, two out. Miguel Agramani, lined out, grounded out, walked, 0 for 2 officially. Up high, ball four, bases are loaded. Now you get to the point where you start figuring. You say, okay, bases loaded, home run, you know, four runs. Now you're down six to five. They're making the change. Yeah. So it looks like Coach Roslin, if, if we were right, and they had brought in... Um, Jackson Wheeler to go to right field. Looks like they're bringing the center fielder in to pitch, Michael Segretti. And Jackson Wheeler comes out, and number 15 will go into center field. 15 is uh, Sam Shutlig. Uh, I'm sorry, Sam, I'm going to get your name correct because I was. But I might not be right about that. It's hard to tell from our distance what the numbers are. The numbers are hard to read, you're right. And they got a lot of guys running all over the place, so. Shepling, uh, number 15, is a six-foot junior. He is number number 15. We can't see that far out to center field to tell you. We do know it is Segretti, Michael Segretti, who comes in to pitch from center field. Slips on that first pitch, but that hole that pitchers dig where they land, remember it was a left-hander who was in just now. So Segretti's going to have to be sure that the hole, he's repaired it to the point where he lands. Well, not an ideal ending, but the good news is you get an opportunity to break in some some pitching in a tough situation to get out of the game, and you still got some run support. But, you know, if you're Faustin, anything you can do to take a couple runs here, yeah. and move station to station, creep back in and get the tying run at the plate, you're almost there. I should have learned my lesson a couple years ago. We had a game, Edgewood versus somebody uh, in a football game. I forget who it was. Maybe it was C. Moulton Wright. And the one team was up like, I'm going to say, by three touchdowns with maybe five minutes to go. And I was going into my wrap-up because we were going to leave the game directly at the end of the game. And I had given the one team credit for winning, but don't you know they recovered two fumbles, came back and won the game. The team was down by three touchdowns. Yeah, and I happens. swore I would never again prematurely 
well, to clear a team away. You're, you are under a time constraint. We have to wrap these games right up after they're over, so you have to do that. Now Sabretti takes the mound, and here's his first pitch to Lipinski. Strike one to Lipinski. Lipinski is a three. Center fielder against center fielder, right? Yeah. Lipinski, who fanned twice and flew out last time up. Well, would he like nothing better than to blast it right here? Good job by Segretti to come in and get ahead. Right. That's probably why they brought him in, right? Ground ball, shortstop. Wheeler with the, and the third Fritzer. second base. Christian Fritzer, so of course it gets hit to him. It, it is Christian He did a good Fritzer. job of sitting on that. The difference, Thank he you. really sat. He got low on that and dug it out. So Segretti comes in and Takes care of it. Two pitches. Boy, why didn't they just pitch in to begin with? <laughs> Christian Schertzer, thank you, uh, Scott, for saying that. He'll move back to play shortstop. And that's why, again, we're talking about he being at Frostburg as a shortstop. Tough hop. He stayed right down on it, as you Set said. on it, yeah. And then knew all he had to do was flip it over to his brother at second base. And the final out is recorded on the force out. So Lipinski reaches on the force out, but that's the last out on the six to four out. That is our final score. The Boston Cougars do get a run, one run on one hit. There was a one error, and there were two runners left on base. And so our final score, six to one, the Pattersonville Huskies win it. Winning pitcher Christian Scherzer goes to four and zero on the year. So Scott, again, a five game winning streak now for Patterson Mill. Yep. They go now yep. to six and three. Yep, and they're doing their traditional run that they do. They run a few wind sprints in the outfield after a victory or a loss. And Falston's in right field taking a knee, talking to Coach Morlock. Both field, I was really looking forward to this game because they're both yeah. well-coached teams. It's fun to watch them. Um, one inning is what it came down to. Sure did. The Cougars yeah. now losing. They go down to six and three, and they've now lost three in a row. So we talk about two teams going in two different directions. Yep. One who has now won five in a row, one who has now lost three in a row. So Falston is going to want to recover. And, of course, Patterson Mill is going to want to keep up that that uh, winning streak if they can. Yeah, and yeah, it goes down. My player of the game is Evan Selich for that that big hit and in a situation where, you uh, you know, Christian's shirts are pitched really a yeah. good game. And you got to give him credit, but he needs run support. And in that situation, knocking, having the big hit, knocking in the runs and that big inning uh, really is what this game came down to. So. Remember, Scott, as you said, there were two out and nobody on in that uh, bottom of the fourth inning. Right. Jackson Wheeler drew a walk. Adam Laurentius drew a walk. And then it was the big hit by Evan Selich, the two-strike hit, scoring a run. And then the big hit by Ethan Scherzer, who also drove in a run. Uh, then came the double steal, the delayed double steal, driving in the third run, and then that two-base error, that's the five runs. Yep. I want to thank uh, this high school game of the week, proudly sponsored by APG FCU, member-owned and member-driven credit union, helping families in Hartford County achieve, prosper, and grow. Again, our final score from Patterson Hill High School, it's the Patterson Hill Huskies winning over the Falston Cougars by a final score of 6-1. Scott Elliott, so good to be with you. Always good to be with you, Don. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We'll see you again real soon.